This is Kitik G and here is a one-shot story of what if Naruto went to the Avatar realm and married Azula first part. What is the story all about? Naruto seeks firebending training, discovers the Sun Warriors, returns, rises in the military, and questions aggressive tactics post-failed invasion. He finds his missing piece by dueling. Check out Windstorm 16 for more awesome fanfic. Check the link below. If you're new to my channel subscribe, like, and share. Click the notification bell for more updates. Let's get started. For almost a hundred years, the four nations have been at war with each other. Having begun when the Fire Nation, under the control of Fire Lord Sozin, invaded the Earth Kingdom. Occupying its territory and setting up numerous colonies, sending several Fire Nation families to settle in these colonies. Though Sozin's attempts to continue bringing the rest of the world under his control were stopped by Avatar Roku. Sparing the Fire Lord due to their past friendship, but swore to kill him if he continued with his plans to cause global conflict. Only for Roku to soon die on his home island after an eruption, being left behind by Sozin so he would be able to continue with his plans uninterrupted. Leading to Sozin beginning his campaign to take control of all four nations. Starting his plans by building his forces and using the power of a comet that passes by every hundred years and grants firebenders near unlimited power using their enhanced firebending to launch an attack against the air nomads, in order to find and eliminate the next avatar. Leading to the death of all airbenders, except one when Sozin learned the avatar had vanished. With no one left to stand in his way, Sozin began his attack on the Earth Kingdom as well as the Northern and Southern Water Tribes. Gaining control of more territory throughout the Earth Kingdom, until his passing and his son, Azulon, ascended to the throne. Azulon continued his father's campaign and was responsible for destroying the Southern Water Tribe's military power and wiping out their waterbenders. Having created the Southern Raiders as a means to pillage and raid the coastlines of the South Sea, further weakening the Southern Water Tribe and devastating the Southern Earth Kingdom. Azulon's firstborn son, Iroh, followed in his father's and grandfather's footsteps, rising to become a military commander. Along with gaining the title, the Dragon of the West, after hunting and killing the last living dragon and his use of fire breath. As for the citizens of the Fire Nation, many were raised and educated into believing the war against the other nations was a justified one. Censoring historical records and using propaganda in order to educate newer generations that the Fire Nation was fighting for the greater good, instilling a sense of loyalty in citizens. Leading many, both benders and non-benders, to join the military for the honor of serving their nation and the Fire Lord. While for others, they instead saw joining the military as a means to support themselves and their family. And there were those that joined due to not having anywhere else to turn, having no other path they could take. One such person lived in a harbor city on Capital Island, the largest of the Fire Islands, and where most of the capital's commoners lived. The person was a six-year-old boy with a rather unique appearance, not having the normal black or brown hair, nor the golden, amber, bronze or brown eyes common in the Fire Nation. Instead having fair skin, spiky bright blonde hair and equally bright blue eyes, along with three whisker-like marks on his cheeks. This was Naruto, an orphaned peasant, being seen as little more than a street urchin by most, but also having the ability to firebend. Something that Naruto had been ecstatic and hopeful about when he first awakened his bending, given the opportunities it would give him. The biggest one being able to join the fire army, along with the chance at being able to rise above being a regular soldier. As while non-benders were able to join, it was rare for them to rise higher ranks than a firebender. Unfortunately, Naruto wasn't able to do anything, even with his bending, due to him not having the finances to enroll into the military academy nor the skill to warrant enough attention for recruitment. Though he didn't let that stop him, with Naruto training every day to use his bending as well as some non-bending skills, wanting to be able to show he's talented at fighting, even without his bending, along with other skills that would get him noticed. However, there was only so much Naruto could teach himself to do before he began stagnating, especially without someone to actually teach him more about firebending and combat, leading to the whiskered blonde to start planning to leave, hoping to find someone who could teach him. Currently, Naruto was in his home, a rundown and abandoned apartment building, packing all his supplies for his journey. Having had to steal most of them, wearing a hood and mask to hide his eye catching hair and eyes. Okay, I have everything I'll need. Hopefully it'll last long enough to reach land. Thought Naruto, closing his bag and grabbed a map of the four nations. Looking out the window, Naruto saw it was now nighttime, making him nod before grabbing his bag and put it on his back. 
Exiting the building, the whiskered blonde began making his way out of the city, being careful to not be seen before he began running once he was outside. With it not being long before he arrived at the shore where a dingy was waiting for him, something else Naruto had stolen and hidden away for when he was ready. Throwing his bag into the dingy, Naruto grunted as he began pushing it into the water, before jumping in once it was far enough in to let the tide carry it further out to sea. Grabbing his map and laying it out, Naruto picked up the oar and began rowing, excited and hopeful to find someone who will be able to train him. Asterisk time skip two days, I really should have thought this through. Naruto thought, sighing as he continued rowing, wanting nothing more than to slam his head into a wall. Things had started out fine, with him making a course for the Fire Nation colonies, knowing they would be the best place to start searching for someone to teach him firebending. Stopping a few times to rest, eat and drink to recover his energy, while making sure he stayed on course. But while Naruto was able to keep himself energized, there wasn't anything he could do about his tiredness. Having forced himself to stay awake, at least until he could find land to sleep. Only to have ended up falling asleep at some point, waking up after about five hours, going by the position of the sun from when he fell asleep and woke up. Something that made the whiskered blonde panic with how he could have drifted off course. While having no way to tell where he was now or which direction he was facing, Naruto simply began rowing straight ahead, hoping to find land soon. Rowing throughout the entire night, splashing water on his face whenever he came close to falling asleep again, not wanting to risk drifting off again. Though after two days and seeing no land in sight, Naruto began losing hope, now simply wanting to get back on dry land. Starting to wish I was a waterbender instead, at least then I'd be able to try and catch some fish. Thought Naruto while looking at his dwindling supplies and rations, knowing if he didn't find land soon, he might as well throw himself into the ocean. If there are any spirits out there, I could really use some help or at least be shown where I'm supposed to go. Naruto said, looking around for anything, any signs that would help him figure out which way he's supposed to go. Only to jump while his eyes widened when he heard thunder overhead, with Naruto freaking out when he looked up to see dark clouds and felt rain start hitting him. Oh come on! shouted Naruto before he began quickly rowing to try and escape the storm. Rowing as fast as he could, Naruto's panic only grew as the rain began falling even harder, along with hearing the thunder and lightning above him with his panic turning into fear as waves began forming and rocking the dingy. Please, 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 please. Please spirits, Agni, anyone let me get out of this. Naruto mentally begged, not wanting to end up dying here in the middle of the sea. Though the whiskered blonde felt his hope fade away, replaced with horror and despair as a large wave rose up in front of him before coming down right on top of him in the dingy. Later the storm continued raging for the rest of the day, only stopping early into the night with the sea having settled by the time it started dying down. While on a seemingly uninhabited island north of the Fire Nation's mainland, the tide washed up onto the shore, carrying debris and other objects from the storm that washed up on the beach, including Naruto himself. The young boy remaining motionless for a few moments, until he suddenly shot up coughing and gagging, turning over as he spat out seawater he swallowed, heaving for a few moments until he fell back down on the ground panting heavily. What the hell? thought Naruto, lifting his arm up in front of him before grunting as he raised his head and to look at his body, seeing he's still in one piece, somehow. Am I dead? Naruto muttered, wondering if he's dead right now and this was the spirit world. You're not dead yet, boy, said someone, making Naruto tense while struggling to get up, but managed to do so. Looking at who spoke, Naruto saw it was a tall, large man with lightly tanned skin, brown eyes, and a black goatee along with white and dull red face paint, with his attire consisting of red and gold tribal clothing and a large yellow feathered headdress. With him were two other people wearing similar clothing, minus the headdress and only having red face paint in different designs. Who are you boy? demanded the man, making the whiskered blonde gulp. You a, uh, Naruto, sir, s so sorry if I'm intruding. I, I swear I didn't mean to come here, wherever here is said Naruto while bowing to the people, with the man frowning. How did you come to arrive on our island? What were you even doing out at sea alone? The man asked. I was, I was caught in a storm A and I come I left because I, I wanted to find someone to teach me firebending. Naruto replied, figuring it'd be better to be honest, with the man's frown deepening. Tell me, Naruto, do you know of the sun warriors? Said the man, 
making Naruto look up at him in confusion. The Sun Warriors. Uh, a little, they were the first firebenders who discovered it from the dragons, but they, they died out a long time ago. Right? said Naruto, not knowing much about the history of the Fire Nation besides the basics. That is what we wanted the world to believe, so that we could maintain our tribe's heritage and preserve the true nature of firebending. Away from the corruption it has suffered, distorted into believing the source of fire is hatred and rage. The man stated, causing Naruto's eyes to widen in shock. W.H. What? Why your T.R. tribe, then, your sun warriors? Naruto said in disbelief that the sun warriors still existed after all this time. We are. I am the chief. And you boy, you wish to learn firebending? Do you wish to learn the destructive power of fire or the true ways of the sun? Questioned the chief, with the whiskered blonde snapping out of his shock. Aye aye, it would be an honor to learn from the first firebenders, replied Naruto while bowing, only to end up stumbling as what little energy he had left was starting to leave him. We shall see if you are deemed worthy, but first it would be best for you to rest and regain your strength. Once you have recovered, then you shall be allowed the chance to see if you are worthy by presenting yourself to the masters, Ran and Shaw. Together, they shall read your hearts, your soul and your ancestry. If they deem you worthy, they will teach you the true essence of firebending. But if they do not, you will be destroyed on the spot. The chief said, looking at Naruto to see if he'd back down knowing the risk only for him to stand up straight despite how tired and weak he was. I've already come this far. I don't plan to turn back now. Naruto said, refusing to give up with how far he's come and now finally getting the chance to learn from the first firebenders. Seeing his determination, the chief nodded before motioning one of the sun warriors to help Naruto back to the city. Asterisk time skip 10 years it took Naruto 3 days to fully recover before he was ready to face Ran and Shaw learning he had to bring a piece of the eternal flame and present it to them. With Naruto doing so, only to be shocked and amazed when he saw that Ran and Shaw weren't firebending masters, they were dragons. Two gigantic dragons, a blue one and a red one, with the two dragons flying around Naruto. Having been unsure what to do exactly, Naruto merely bowed and offered them the flame, only to notice that they seemed to be flying in a strange pattern. With neither dragon seeming to stop, the whiskered blonde began copying their movements, wondering if that's what they wanted. Which seemed to work as after he finished copying them, Ran and Shaw flew down on either side of the mountain, seeming to judge him. Until finally, they both unleashed blasts of fire around Naruto, much to his awe at seeing the swirling flames and all the different color. The young boy being able to understand the true meaning of firebending, that it wasn't destructive power, it was life and energy. Afterwards, he'd learned from the Sun Warrior chief that the last person to visit them had been General Iroh, with Naruto realizing he lied about killing the last dragon to protect Ran and Shaw. Something which also made Naruto feel honored to learn from the same masters that taught the Dragon of the West. Naruto stayed with the Sun Warriors for four years, training under them to master the dancing dragon and his firebending, along with adding his own changes and style to it, with him also still learning from Ran and Shaw as well wanting to be able to learn and master everything he could from the original firebenders. It was after four years, he finished his training and was sworn to secrecy to never tell anyone about the Sun Warriors or Ran and Shaw, leading to Naruto returning to the Fire Nation, still wishing to join the military and become a soldier, while now having the means to do it. Once he returned, Naruto began taking part in firebending matches, both as a means to make money and to get attention. Knowing his fastest way into the academy was to be noticed by some high-ranking officer and get them to sponsor his enrollment. Which eventually happened, given that a ten-year-old being skilled enough to challenge and defeat firebenders older and more experienced than him would get attention. With Naruto being enrolled into the academy in less than a year after his return, graduating when he is thirteen years old, where he rose through the ranks of the fire army. By the time he was fifteen, Naruto was able to rise to the rank of high general and given command of his own forces. With him also getting more streamlined armor like most officers wear. While making a few modifications to it, having curved blades attached to the sides of the gauntlets as a means to catch or deflect enemy weapons, reinforcing the cuirass for added protection from any projectiles, pauldrons shaped like dragon heads, as well as the Fire Nation emblem on the back with red and blue dragons circling it, out of respect to Ran and Shaw. The whiskered firebender had also begun using a weapon as well, with it being a large gunby fan which he used to boost his bending, along with a chain and kusarigama attached at the end for close to mid-range enemies. 
A year has passed since his promotion to High General, with the now 16-year-old Naruto having been summoned by Fire Lord Ozai himself. Entering the throne room, Naruto saw the Fire Lord sitting on the throne behind a wall of fire, shrouding him in shadows. With the whiskered blonde seeing that he wasn't the only one in the throne room, seeing someone standing in front of the wall of fire beside Ozai. The person being a 14-year-old girl with fair skin, golden amber eyes and dark black hair pulled up into a topknot with two strands framing her face. With her attire consisting of red boots with golden soles and the tips curving up, baggy, pale red pants, a dark red shirt underneath a pale red one with shorter sleeves, and red robes over it with gold edgings. Naruto recognized her as Princess Azula, Ozai's youngest child. You wish to see me, Lord Ozai? Naruto asked, kneeling down before the Fire Lord. General Naruto, I'm sure you've heard by now of the failed invasion on the Northern Water Tribe, stated Ozai, with Naruto nodding in response. Yes, it's truly a shame to lose those soldiers and ships, as well as the demise of Admiral Zhao, said Naruto, lying about the last part since he had zero sympathy for Zhao's death. He honestly never really liked Zhao to begin with seeing him as too brash, arrogant, self-absorbed, and being the perfect definition of a corrupt and twisted firebender, having no control or form, only caring about destructive power. Naruto especially didn't agree with his desire to invade the Northern Water Tribe, let alone his obsession with killing the Moon Spirit. Having refused the offer to help invade the North Pole due to Zhao's obsession with attacking them rather than trying for a peaceful solution. While the High General was loyal to the Fire Nation and believed in its cause of spreading its prosperity to the other nations, that didn't mean he agreed with everything they've done during the war. The biggest things he didn't agree with being the Air Nomad genocide as well as the invasions of the Southern and Northern Water Tribes. Finding the whole thing incredibly stupid, making enemies out of nations made up entirely of waterbenders, the element that counters their own. With the invasion and discovering Zhao's desire to destroy the moon only solidified both water tribes as their enemies. Even more so that he'd choose to attack so close to night and during a full moon, when waterbenders were at their strongest. It's a miracle he got close enough to even succeed in killing the moon spirit, even temporarily. Personally, Naruto believed it would have been better if they made a non-aggression pact with the northern and southern water tribes. Or try to create an alliance with them, most likely through political marriage which would ensure stronger ties between their nations, along with integrating their cultures into each other, helping both nations grow stronger and prosperous. But now they'll only be our enemies and will work with the Avatar, who I'm also sure isn't very happy or open to the idea of talking after what happened to the rest of his people, thought Naruto, not doubting that the Avatar wants to take them down more than anyone after he learned of his people's genocide. It's another thing that set Naruto apart from other firebenders, he preferred trying for a peaceful solutions first along with offering defeated enemies a chance to surrender. Wanting to actually make allies rather than turn everyone into an enemy of the Fire Nation, like so many others seemed set on doing. Which also didn't make him very popular with the other high-ranked officials, who only cared about absolute victory, crushing anyone or anything that got in their way. But they also couldn't argue with the results, as Naruto's been able to bring territories over to his side by choosing to talk rather than fight. Though that's not to say Naruto wasn't still a fierce firebender and has demonstrated his abilities numerous times when fighting was the only path. Or when the peaceful approach failed and it was the only path left to take, he didn't hesitate to crush his enemies. Of course, Naruto wouldn't voice his personal thoughts and feelings on such things, knowing that it'd only result in his death. Yes, truly a shame. Even more shameful that my own brother and son have chosen to betray the Fire Nation. Iroh has sided against our forces in conquering the Northern Water Tribe while Zuko has failed to capture the Avatar. Both have now been labeled as traitors to the Fire Nation, so it now falls to Azula to capture them and find the Avatar. Said Ozai, with Azula smirking at her assignment, pleased at the chance to hunt down her uncle, brother, and the Avatar. Which now brings me to why you have been summoned, General Naruto. I am giving you the task to assist my daughter in capturing the traitors and the Avatar. As despite your rather, soft ideology, you were one of the Fire Nation's best generals. Ozai said, having been reluctant to bestow such a title on the whiskered firebender. Finding it pathetic that any soldier in the Fire Army would waste time on things such as peace talks or lying with other nations, when they were meant to be crushed and subjugated. But the results speak for themselves and it has allowed Naruto to gather allies both in the Fire Nation and on the battlefield. 
having even crossed paths with Zuko and Iroh during the former's banishment, and was somehow able to receive training from his brother during the encounter. Which only added to Ozai's dislike for the teenager, seeing him as not only weak for his beliefs, but also as a genuine threat to himself. With how he was able to make allies easily and draw people to him, Ozai saw Naruto as a potential threat. Someone that could eventually try to challenge him to become Fire Lord with the support he gains. It made him want nothing more than to kill him or at the very least arrange his assassination, but knew he couldn't even do that. As the whiskered blonde hasn't done anything treasonous, following his orders to the letter and having great success on the battlefield, along with the loyalty of his men. Plus Ozai knew if he made a move against Naruto or if such an act was ever traced back to him, he'd have to deal with those loyal to Naruto causing problems or even deserting. And as much as the Fire Lord hated to admit it, Naruto was also far more useful to him alive than dead. It would be an honor, Lord Ozai. I shall do my best to assist Princess Azula in her task," said Naruto before seeing Azula walk up to him, looking down at him with a smirk. I'm sure you will. But allow me to make a few things clear, I will not have your jeopardizing my mission with your silly little desires to talk or find a peaceful solution. I expect you to follow my orders to the letter and should you hesitate to strike the traitors out of some misguided loyalty, I assure I will not hesitate to bring you down," Azula said, narrowing her eyes at Naruto, who looked at her with a raised brow before he stood up making the fire princess be the one who has to look up. And I assure you, princess, I never hesitate and fulfill all assignments given to me. If Prince Zuko and General Iroh are to be brought in, they will be brought in. If the Avatar is to be hunted down, he will be. I only hope you're as good at following orders as you are at giving them," Naruto replied, much to Azula's surprise and anger that he didn't simply bow down to her, instead actually standing up to her. And who were to think you can give me orders? demanded Azula, angry that he thought he could order her around. I mean no offense princess, as I have heard that you are one of the most powerful firebenders of our generation, but you also don't have any true military experience so I hope that you will be able to follow orders and listen to those with such experience," said Naruto, which only seemed to anger Azula more. Well, let's see your experience help you now," Azula shouted before spinning around with her foot raised, blue flames trailing behind it as she moved to attack Naruto. Azula! Ozai yelled, the wall of flames shooting up in response to his anger while the fire princess froze at her father's voice. You will stop this foolish behavior immediately. I expect this kind of behavior from Zuko, not from you. You will act as one befitting of your station, understood?" said Ozai, narrowing his eyes at his daughter, despite his own displeasure at Naruto's attitude, while Azula bowed her head. Why yes father, I I understand, replied Azula, a little nervous at having her father's anger directed at her, but also giving Naruto a dark glare for this humiliation. You had better. You both have your mission and are dismissed to prepare to locate the traitors in the Avatar," Ozai said, with Naruto and Azula both bowing to the Fire Lord before exiting the throne room. With Azula giving Naruto one last glare before walking away, with the blonde firebender rolling his eyes at her behavior before shaking his head, leaving as well to prepare and to have the soldiers under his command moved over to the Fire Nation Royal Sloop, along with seeing to it that any other assigned personnel are properly integrated as well. Later it wasn't long before the royal sloop was ready to leave as the crew was on board, while Naruto had gotten all his soldiers onto the ship, with Azula having her own group of imperial firebenders. Once the ship had left port, it began heading for Zuko's and Iroh's last known location, a village resort located on the Suoku River. With Naruto stand in the deck with the royal procession, who all soon went down to their hands and knees as a palanquin was carried out by some servants. I'll never understand the point of those thought Naruto while shaking his head, as the servants opened the curtains and Azula stepped out, motioning the soldiers to stand up. My brother and my uncle have disgraced the Fire Lord, and have brought shame on all of us," Azula stated as she walked between the rows of soldiers. You might have mixed feelings about attacking members of the royal family. I understand. But I assure you, if you hesitate, I will not hesitate to bring you down. Dismissed," said Azula, wanting them all to know what happens if they displease her. If I may princess, I don't believe threatening the soldiers is a good way to inspire loyalty nor morale. It will also means there would be less people to operate the sloop, if you start killing crew members," Naruto stated, causing Azula to look at him in anger and annoyance. You would do well to keep your opinions to yourself general, 
I am the one in command of this mission and you will be wise to not test my thinning patience. Retorted Azula, still angry at how he humiliated her in front of her father and wasn't going to let him do the same in front of the soldiers. Of course, princess. But perhaps I should remind of the necessity of listening to the advice of others, otherwise you could make a mistake or repeating a previous one. Said Naruto, the ravenette growling as she is tempted to incinerate him, but restrained herself. Your advice is noted. Now did you have something important to tell me or did you just come to waste my time? Azula demanded to try and regain control of the situation. Yes princess, I'm afraid the tides won't allow us to bring the ship into port before nightfall. Naruto said, knowing they needed to wait for high tide, otherwise they'll risk running the ship aground, while Azula smirked at seeing a chance to finally make him afraid. I'm sorry, general, but I do not know much about the tides. Can you explain something to me? Questioned Azula while walking over to the side of the ship. Of course princess, I'd be happy to help educate you on such matters. Perhaps later you would wish for lessons on naval warfare as well. Naruto offered, making the fire princess grit her teeth. No, that is quite fine general, you only need to answer this. You said the tides would not allow us to bring the ship in. Do the tides command this ship? Azula said, annoyed that he seemed to be mocking her. Yes, princess replied naruto with azula pausing at this while feeling her eyes start twitching what azula demanded through gritted teeth you asked if the tides command the ship they do princess a captain merely directs a ship to its destination the tides decide when a ship will arrive right now the tides are against us and low if we were to try pulling into port now then we would most likely run aground and require repairs so to answer your question the tides do command this ship explained naruto while mentally smirking as azula looked at him with her face turning red while gritting her teeth well that is very interesting general and if i were to have you thrown overboard would the tides think twice about smashing you against the rocky shore said azula as her restraint began slipping i don't believe so princess though it's unlikely that the tides are strong enough to carry me with such force naruto replied well then maybe you should worry less about the tides who have already made up their mind about killing you and worry more about me, who's still mulling it over. Azula growled, as she saw what little fear she managed to instill into the crew and soldiers was beginning to fade away, all of them now looking between the two. I'm afraid my death won't change anything princess, aside from no longer having anyone to command the ship, said Naruto, with Azula's hands twitching, wanting nothing more than to unleash her flames on him. I'm sure I am more than capable of commanding the ship should you meet an unfortunate demise," said Azula while gritting her teeth, with the whiskered blonde turning towards. Are you sure, princess? You seem rather tense, perhaps it would be best for to lie down inside," Naruto said, the ravenette opening her mouth to respond, only to be stopped when he spoke again. Or is it that your red tides are rolling in, right now? Naruto asked with a small smirk. With this finally pushing Azula over the edge, the fire princess shouting as she swung her arm at Naruto, unleashing a large wave of blue flames at him. Shooting a continuous jet at the high general, intent to completely incinerate him. Only for Azula to be shocked when Naruto closed the distance between them, ducking under her flames, grabbing her wrist as he did so. Before pushing her arm into the air, turning towards the flames she unleashed, thrusting his arm towards them before flicking his wrist up, guiding the flames into the air before they could hit anyone. What? Azula thought, shocked that he was able to not only dodge her attack but also manipulate her flames. Shocking the fire princess at his actions, but also intriguing her a bit since she's never seen anyone manipulate her flames, dispel them sure, but never control them as if they were their own. Before it soon gave way to rage at seeing how his actions weakened her in front of the crew. Seeing the fear she instilled in them was now completely gone with this act. Grabbing the princess of the fire nation without permission that could be seen as treason. I could have you executed right now," Azula said while removing his hold on her, only to be surprised when Naruto narrowed his eyes at her. Treason can also be attacking a commanding officer of the fire army and endangering the lives of its soldiers. Perhaps you can't be executed, but I don't think the fire lord would hesitate to banish you for such actions," retorted Naruto, angering the ravenette but also worrying her slightly. Yet who would my father believe, you or me? We both know you aren't exactly popular, being too soft for the Fire Nation. It's a miracle you were even able to become a soldier," taunted Azula with a smirk. 
Well I hope your firebending is better than your taunting. Since if you know so much about me, you'd know I'm one of the Fire Nation's best soldiers, it's why I'm a general. While I'm sure you were busy braiding your hair, like a good little princess. Oh wait, I mean your servants were busy braiding your hair, can't have the princess of the Fire Nation know how to take care of herself. Naruto said with his own smirk, making Azula scowl. I can take care of myself just fine. I was already a firebending prodigy by the time you were lucky enough to get the attention needed to even join the fire army. I don't even know why father would waste time sending you on this mission. The only thing you'll accomplish is messing everything up. Azula retorted, with the high general merely smirking at her. Yet here I am. I guess you aren't as skilled as you think you were if he wanted to me to go with you. Said Naruto, with this angering Azula even further at him now questioning her firebending abilities. I don't think anything. I know I'm skilled and I'll prove it. Right here against you, in an Agni Kai. Tomorrow at sunset, you'll see the difference between you and me. Azula said, surprising the crew and soldiers that she'd initiate an Agni Kai, before they looked at the general to see what he'd do. You wish to challenge me in an Agni Kai? All right, what are the stakes? Naruto said, accepting the challenge. The winner will be the commanding officer on this ship as well as given full command of this mission replied Azula with a smirk, confident that she'll win. I'm already the commanding officer, and it seems like you'd be the only one to gain anything if you win, since you would essentially be given unopposed authority of both the ship and the overall mission, stated Naruto, making Azula scoff and cross her arms. When I win, there is no if. But fine, if you believe you have a chance at winning, then you'll get the honor of becoming my fiancé, Azula said, surprising the whiskered blonde. Are are you serious? Naruto asked, not expecting she'd actually offer that. Oh I'm very serious, as I'm sure you have such a good chance at winning. Azula replied sarcastically, making Naruto look at her blankly while seeing that she wasn't being serious. Fine, winner becomes commanding officer of the ship, said Naruto, with Azula smirking at him accepting her challenge. Someone send a message to my father, Azula said wanting her father to approve the Agni Kai and stipulation to make it official, while leaving Naruto no way to try and get out of it. With an officer leaving to prepare the message for the Agni Kai and the stipulations in place for the winner to be sent to the Fire Lord. Asterisk time skip one day asterisk the next day at sunset, the royal sloop had dropped anchor while the entire crew was on deck, though stayed on either side of the ship's tower to avoid getting caught between Naruto and Azula. While Azula's firebending instructors Lo and Lee sat at the top of the steps, acting as the mediators. With Naruto and Azula both being across from each other, kneeling down and both only wearing black pants and a red cape over their shoulders, while being bare chested. Though Azula also had bandages wrapped around her breasts to preserve her modesty. Standing up, the two discarded their capes and got into their stances, waiting for the gong to sound and the start of the Agni Kai, hearing it not a moment later. Not wasting a moment, Azula swiped two fingers through the air before unleashing a wave of blue flames at Naruto, the high general rolling underneath the flames to avoid them. Before kicking his leg out at Azula, shooting a blast of fire at her, with the fire princess shooting several fireballs that dispersed his flames. Aiming her fingers up, Azula released a jet of flames before bringing it down onto Naruto, who punched his fist at the flames, shooting a fireball through them to create an opening to jump through. Flipping in the air, Naruto released a wave of fire at Azula. The ravenette rolling out of the way before putting her hand on the ground and spun around, kicking her legs repeatedly at Naruto, releasing several waves of flames at him. Who held his arms in front of him before throwing them out just the fire reached him, dispelling the flames only to be surprised to see Azula flying at him, shooting jets of flames from her hands and feet. The fire princess smirked before aiming her hands and feet at Naruto, unleashing four powerful jets of blue fire at him. Acting quickly, Naruto released a blast of flames to his right, propelling him off to avoid getting hit by Azula's flames. Before he then propelled himself back down to the ship, landing and creating a long stream of fire he grabbed and launched at Azula, who retaliated by creating her own fire whip and launched it at Naruto's, the getting entwined, with Azula using her momentum to get behind Naruto and strike him across the back, only for the high general to kick his leg out, releasing a blast of flames, forcing Azula to roll out of the way to avoid them. Rotating her hands, Azula created a whirling disc of flames that she launched at Naruto, before creating several more which she threw at him as well. 
with Naruto jumping around to dodge the fire discs until Azula threw two at once at him. The whiskered firebender waiting for the right moment before jumping in the air, right between the discs before putting his hands out and taking control of them, throwing them right back at Azula. The ravenette thrusting her hand down, creating a firewall in front of her that blocked the discs, before she held her hands together. Manipulating the firewall to shrink into a tiny firebomb in her hand, which she then thrust towards Naruto, unleashing a powerful explosion. Rotating his arms, Naruto began manipulating the explosion and made it shrink down before it could damage the ship, before thrusting his fists forward launching two powerful streams of fire at Azula, who unleashed her own streams of fire that collided against Naruto's. The attacks colliding against each other before they burst past each other, with Naruto and Azula barely avoiding getting hit by the firewalls rushing past them. Seeing a chance to win, Azula quickly shot jets of flames out of her feet, launching herself into the air before releasing a hug amount of flames out of both her feet and hands behind her, propelling herself at high speeds straight towards Naruto smirking as she quickly closed the distance between them. Cutting off the flames from her right side, Azula spun around in the air with her left held out to slam her flame-covered foot into Naruto's head. Only for her eyes to widen when Naruto ducked down under her kick at the last second, grabbing her ankle before dispersing her flames, throwing the fire princess at the bow of the ship. With Azula grunting at the impact, before she went to get up, but saw Naruto standing over her with his fist pulled back. You done? Naruto asked making the ravenette scowl. No, but you are, said Azula, placing her hands on the ground behind her before flipping, releasing arcs of flames from her feet, forcing Naruto to jump back. Getting back on her feet, Azula began rotating her arms, creating trails of lightning before bringing her hands back together before thrusting her hand forward, shooting a bolt of lighting at Naruto. The fire princess being pleased, knowing she's won the match while doubting he'd be able to dodge lightning or was capable of doing it, himself. Before being shocked when Naruto held out his left hand with two fingers extended and seemed to catch the lightning before drawing right hand down his arm towards his stomach, then throwing his arm out, shooting the lightning back at Azula. But rather than hit the ravenette, it only shot past her, though Azula was still shocked that he was able to redirect her lightning. With the shock leaving Azula open as Naruto propelled himself at her, jumping up and flipping in the air, shooting a wave of flames at Azula, who only managed to barely dodge. But before she could retaliate, Naruto landed behind her, kicking his leg at her, releasing a jet of flames that knocked Azula back. Not stopping there, Naruto continued towards Azula, while spinning and kicking his leg out, releasing waves of flames at her, pushing Azula further and further back before Naruto suddenly stomped his foot on the ground, releasing a blast of flames across the deck of the ship that knocked Azula off her feet. With the Fire Princess attempting to get back up, only to freeze when Naruto stood over her, leaving her unable to try and attack or get up. The sight making her scowl, not wanting to accept it but knew she'd lost. Well? Finish it. Said Azula, knowing an Agni Kai doesn't end until a combatant is burned. The whiskered blonde thrust his fist at her, shooting a fireball at Azula, but rather than hit her, it only impacted the ground, something that only seemed to anger Azula more. Maybe we don't get along, but I'm not going to burn a comrade. Naruto stated before offering her a hand, the sight making Azula scoff and smack it away as she stood up. The winner, General Naruto. You have won the right to remain in command of the Royal Sloop. Along with being given full authority of the mission to locate and capture both the Avatar, as well as Prince Zuko and General Iroh, said Lee. As well as have won Princess Azula's hand marriage as your fiancé, Lo added, causing Naruto's and Azula's heads to snap towards them. What? The two shouted in shock at what she just said. Yes, General Naruto is now your fiancé, princess. You said it yourself, should he win then he would become your fiancé. Lee replied, much to their disbelief. I was being sarcastic. I wasn't serious, Azula said, shaking her head in refusal. Then you should have been more specific, princess. It was one of the stipulations in the message sent to Fire Lord Ozai and he approved that you two would be wed should General Naruto emerge victorious. Or perhaps it is now, Prince Naruto said low as the two bowed to the new couple. Much to Naruto's and Azula's horror as the two looked each other, not believing this was actually happening, before they realized what they were doing and turned away in a huff. For the record, I blame you, Naruto stated, making Azula grit her teeth. You're the one that refused to learn your place, 
retorted Azula, blaming him for antagonizing her. Excuse me for not being a lapdog since there is a difference between loyalty and blind obedience, princess. Maybe, you should have acted less like a spoiled brat, said Naruto, still refusing to look at her. And maybe you should respect your betters, Azula yelled, wanting nothing more than to fire another bolt of lightning at him. Is this how flirting is done these days? It was much more straightforward in our day. Lo and Lee asked while watching the two argue. We're not flirting. Naruto and Azula shouted while glaring at the two instructors before glaring at each other, only to turn away again. With Lo and Lee glancing at each other before nodding, both knowing the two were really flirting. The next day, Azula was on the deck of the ship with Lee and Lo, training furiously as the memories of her Agni Kai match against Naruto kept flashing through her mind. Angry that he was able to beat her, even more so that he was able to use her own lightning against her. But despite her anger, she was still intrigued by him now seeing his strength firsthand and how he stood up to her. Remain focused, Princess Azula, Lo said, seeing that the Fire Princess wasn't fully paying attention to her training. You must keep a clear mind, added Lee, causing Azula to scowl at them. I am focused, retorted Azula before closing her eyes and taking a deep breath, standing perfectly straight. Moving her arms in a circular motion, Azula created trails of lightning before her hands met and thrust her hand forward only to be sent stumbling forward when rather than firing a bolt of lightning ahead of her, the lightning was launched through her other hand behind her. With Lee and Lo noticing how her lightning didn't remain on a controlled path, branching off before fizzling out of existence. What? Thought Azula, getting up while not believing what just happened, that she messed up her lightning generation despite having performed the exact same motions she always has to create it. Your lightning generation is deteriorating. Lee stated upon seeing that Azula's lightning wasn't as powerful as it originally was, if it didn't maintain its form for very long. Focus and control is incredibly lacking, Lo said, making the Ravenette's anger grow even further. My lightning is as powerful as ever. See, Azula shouted, going through the motions again, this time succeeding in firing a lightning bolt ahead of her. Only for her eyes to widen when it fizzled away not a moment later. The sight of her lightning failing made her start panting heavily, before Azula screamed loudly, letting a large stream of flames from her mouth. What the hell is wrong with me? Screamed Azula after she stopped her flames, grabbing the ship's railing tightly with it beginning to melt from her anger. Perhaps some meditation to help clear the mind? Lo and Lee suggested, with Azula taking a few deep breaths to calm down before stepping away from the now melted railing. Training's done for the day. I'll be in my quarters. Azula said, stalking past the two and back into the ship. Though once inside the ship, and making sure there was no one else around, the Fire Princess began stumbling down the hallway, putting a hand on the wall to keep herself standing up. Why? Why did this happen? I finally, finally had my chance, now everything is ruined. Thought Azula, feeling a pain in her chest as everything that had happened began flashing through her mind. When she was first summoned by her father and informed of the failed invasion of the North Pole, the actions of her uncle, and her brother failing to capture the Avatar again. Before he gave her the task to capture them both and hunt down the Avatar, Azula had been ecstatic and eager at receiving the mission. Seeing it as finally getting her moment of triumph, to prove that she is the sole worthy heir of their father, the one who deserved to succeed him as Fire Lord. Only for it all to come crashing down not even an hour later, being embarrassed in front of the only family member that truly acknowledged her. And he compared me to Zuko. Zuko. I am nothing like that embarrassment, he can't even capture a single child. I've done everything fathers asked of me and, and I just made one mistake. And he compares me to Zuko. Thought Azula, knowing how much her father hated Zuko and saw him as weak, a disgrace and an embarrassment. So for him to compare her to her brother, it stung Azula far more than she cared to admit. Now, now I've lost control of not just this ship, but the entire mission as well. And now, now I'm forcefully engaged to the jackass that caused all this. Thought Azula, feeling anger and hatred towards Naruto for setting all of this in motion, just because he couldn't show her the respect she deserves. But the worst part was that Azula knew she couldn't even blame Naruto or anyone else. The only person she could really blame is herself because her own pride and hubris got the better of her, and she knew it. Azula closed her eyes and shook her head when images of Naruto began flashing across her mind, 
looking at her without any fear, not backing down from her threats, the power he displayed during their Agni Kai, even showing her mercy and offering to help her up. Being the only person besides her father that isn't afraid of her, even her own mother, brother and uncle were afraid of her, but he wasn't. Then being able to match her in conversations, always having a response ready for anything she could come up with. But also proving to be her superior in firebending, not only being able to manipulate her own flames but also redirect her lightning as well. Why? 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 Azula mentally screamed as she went turned down a narrow hallway, unable to keep walking as she leaned her back against the wall before slamming her fist into the wall in front of her. Before she slid down the wall, pulling her knees up to her chest and buried her face in them, with the fire princess letting out a muffled scream as she soon began crying. Letting out all the built-up anger, pain, rage, sadness, confusion and hurt that she's kept bottled up the last few days, since her entire world was turned upside down. Why? Why did this happen? Why did any of it happen? Why does he seem to have this effect on me? And why can't I stop thinking about him? thought Azula, wondering why she seemed unable to stop thinking about Naruto and how he had an effect on her she didn't understand. The Ravenet unaware of it being a developing attraction and admiration of Naruto, having never experienced attraction to anyone or anything before, nor felt true admiration of anyone. Leaving her unable to understand what these feelings were nor what they are. Something that made Azula feel scared and vulnerable at not being in control which in turn lead her to something she did understand and preferred, anger. Taking a few moments to collect herself, Azula eventually got up and continued towards her quarters, not taking long to arrive. Only for her eyes to widen in shock when she walked in on Naruto wearing nothing but a towel, showing that the high general had just taken a shower after finishing his own training. With the two looking at each other in shock and embarrassment. As while Azula had already seen Naruto without a shirt during their Agni Kai, now she's seeing him in nothing but a towel. What are you in doing in my room? Azula demanded after snapping out of her shock and embarrassment, not believing he's now invading her quarters. Your room. This is my room. I should be asking what you're doing here. Retorted Naruto, having been informed that his quarters had been moved here, though had no idea as to why but just went along with it. These are the royal quarters for use only by members of the royal family. That means me and certainly not you, said Azula, making Naruto frown at this since it wouldn't make sense why he'd be moved here then. That doesn't make any sense. I was told these were, Naruto said, only to stop as realization dawned on him. Told what? That you need a map to navigate the ship now, Azula said in annoyance. I was told my quarters had been reassigned and moved here, which I now understand why, said Naruto while mentally cursing Ozai realizing he's making some kind of power play by pushing this engagement between him and Azula. The whiskered firebender being aware the fire lord doesn't really like him due to his beliefs and ideology, seeing them as weak and foolish. Along with not being ignorant to how the fire lord felt threatened with the way he makes allies and gains their loyalty. Knowing if Ozai could, he'd likely have killed him by now just to avoid him growing more influential. But Naruto also knew that Ozai saw him as more valuable alive than dead. And if he can't kill me, then he'll find ways to control me. Naruto thought with a frown. What? No, 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 absolutely no. These are my quarters and mine alone, said Azula, shaking her head while refusing to believe she's stuck sharing a room with Naruto, looking out the door to see a guard walking down the hall. You, guard. Explain to the general that there is a mistake and that he has not been reassigned new quarters. Azula said, getting the guard's attention with them bowing to her. Apologies Princess Azula, but there is no mistake. It was an order from Fire Lord Ozai once he received a message of Prince Naruto's victory and engagement with you. He wishes for both of you to now share your quarters. The guard replied before resuming their patrol, walking a little faster to avoid the Fire Princess's wrath. With Azula's eyes widening in shock, disbelief and anger at hearing this, not believing her father was now forcing her to share a room with Naruto. Damn him, damn him to the deepest pits of hell to suffer untold agony and despair. Azula mentally screamed, one of the rare moments she cursed her father, knowing there's nothing she could do since it was an order from the Fire Lord, himself. 
I really hate him right now, thought Naruto, wishing for just one chance to bring Ozai down a few pegs. Before he looked at Azula and grew concerned when he took in the state she was, seeing her hair was coming undone, her eyes were red, she was shaking, and her breathing looked to be raspy. Uh, Azula, look, I am sorry for how I've acted towards you, I'm just not really good people that act like they're above everyone else. Which, I'll admit, did get me into trouble a couple of times after joining the army. So it's nothing personal towards you, I swear, and if you want, I could find a different room to sleep while letting everyone pretend we're sleeping in the same room. Naruto said, knowing it didn't seem fair to Azula how he acted towards her, while seeing how everything that's happened is affecting her. It doesn't matter, he'll find out somehow and force us to stay in a room together, probably with guards watching us. Muttered Azula as she slowly walked past Naruto, knowing her father would find out if they weren't sleeping in the same room. Well, then if you ever want to talk, I'm here if you just need someone to listen. You can even insult me and I won't say anything. Naruto said to try and cheer her up, or at least get a reaction. Only for Azula to simply drop down on the bed, taking a moment to mentally curse that there's only one. Just, get dressed and, and leave me alone. Azula said, sounding completely broken, which only made Naruto look at her in concern. Are you sure? I wouldn't mind staying if you just, need someone around. Offered Naruto, feeling guilty at the state Azula was in, given the part he played in everything. I'm sure just, get dressed and get out already. Replied Azula, wanting to simply be alone, making the high general sigh before nodding as he grabbed his clothes to get dressed in the bathroom and I'm leaving the acquisition of Zuko and Iroh to you, since you're in charge. Azula added with some bite, Naruto nodding silently as he got dressed and put his armor on before exiting the room. Once she heard the door close and was sure she was alone, Azula curled up into a ball and began crying at how things were turning out. Having thought that if she couldn't be loved by her mother and uncle, then she would at least still have her father only for him to marry her off without a second thought after seeing a chance to reign in a rebellious, yet influential, general. After just the slightest moment of weakness, he tossed her aside. Who, who even am I anymore? Azula thought, not even knowing who she is now. Having always been seen as the firebending prodigy as well as the beloved daughter and heir of the Fire Lord. But if she didn't have her father's favor anymore and her firebending was failing her, then who was Azula? Later. It wasn't long before the ship arrived at the wharf of the village resort, where Zuko and Iroh were staying, with Naruto leaving to find them with a team of Imperial Firebenders. Much to his annoyance at now having them around as protection. Before they found where Zuko and Iroh were staying in the village, going to where they were staying, while finding the two were inside. Prince Zuko, General Iroh, Naruto said while stepping into the house, making the two look at him in surprise, even more so at seeing the Imperial Firebenders with him. What? What are you doing here? How did you find us? Zuko asked warily at what how Naruto was able to find them along with what he was doing here, given the past few encounters they've had with anyone from the Fire Nation. Calm down nephew, I'm sure he is not here for a fight. But it is a surprise to see you here General Naruto. Finally taking a break I see, said Iroh turning to Naruto with a good-natured smile, only for the high general to shake his head. Business, I'm afraid, I've been sent by Fire Lord Ozai, revealed Naruto, surprising Zuko while Iroh tensed slightly at learning they were sent by his brother. My father, questioned Zuko, not expecting them to be here on his father's orders. Yes, can you all wait outside? Naruto said, looking at the guards, preferring if they had some privacy. Yes. Prince Naruto, said the lead guard as they bowed before exiting the house, with the whiskered firebender's eye twitched while Zuko's and Iroh's head snapped towards him. Prince, Iroh asked in confusion, with Zuko narrowing his eyes slightly. What does that mean? Zuko demanded, wanting to know why they'd refer to him as, Prince Naruto. That, would be due to an incident that happened yesterday. I wasn't the only one sent, Azula is here as well and we may have, gotten off on the wrong foot. Leading to her challenging me to an Agni Kai, with the winner being given full command of the royal sloop and the mission we're currently on. Azula added the stipulation that if I won, then I would become her fiancé, 
though she only added it as a joke, only for the Fire Lord to approve it. Something we learned after I defeated her, which is why the Imperial Firebenders are with me and referred to me as Prince. Naruto explained, much to their shock and disbelief. You, and Azula, are engaged. Zuko said slowly, trying to wrap his head around the fact Azula wasn't only defeated in an Agni Kai but was now engaged. Yes, replied Naruto with a nod, making Zuko frown. I, see, that's, nice to hear, said Zuko, feeling torn at this new information. While he and Naruto weren't exactly friend, they were acquaintances and on good terms from the few times they've interacted. But now hearing he's going to be married to Azula, he was now a potential rival to the Fire Lord's throne, which was a bitter pill for him to swallow. Well, I suppose congratulations are in order then. I will ensure we send a gift for the wedding. Iroh said, with Naruto nodding in response. That actually brings me to our purpose here. The Fire Lord has, revoked your banishment, Prince Zuko, and now wishes that, both you and General Iroh return to the Fire Nation. Naruto said reluctantly, shocking Zuko at this information while Iroh narrowed his eyes slightly. Father, wants me to come home? Zuko asked in disbelief and slight hope, not thinking his father would ever let him return without the Avatar. Yes, it would seem that with the failed invasion of the Northern Water Tribe, he has, realized he needs those he can, trust by his side. And now he has, regretted banishing you Prince Zuko, now wishing for you both to come back home said Naruto, wanting nothing more than to simply tell them the truth and start running to escape. Zuko was stunned at this, hearing what he's finally getting what he wanted for the last three years, his father wanted him to come home even if he hasn't captured the Avatar. While Iroh was suspicious, doubting Ozai would ever say anything like that, along with noticing how Naruto seemed hesitant about what he was saying. Father regrets it. He, wants me back, muttered Zuko, looking out the window feeling unsure and hopeful that this was really happening, part of him even thinking it was a dream. I understand this is a big change after three years. I'll give you time to take it in, but only until tomorrow. As the Fire Lord has also instructed me and Azula to take over in hunting down the Avatar, so we'll be unable to stay long before we can begin tracking him down. Naruto said, something that annoyed Zuko at learning his sister would be hunting the Avatar. Right, I need to be alone. Zuko said before exiting the house, needing time to think and take everything in, with Naruto nodding before stepping outside. Return to the ship, inform the captain and Azula that we'll be staying until tomorrow. Ordered Naruto, the guards nodding before leaving to head back to the royal sloop. Now that we're alone, perhaps you can tell me my brother's true intentions for sending you and Azula here. Iroh said once the guards were gone making the high general sigh and look at his lightning-bending instructor. Ozai's not doing this out of the kindness of his heart, we were both sent after both of you due to your actions at the North Pole. Revealed Naruto, with the dragon of the West putting the pieces together himself. Feeling saddened that Zuko is facing the consequences of his actions, but he also couldn't stand by and do nothing as Zhao killed the moon spirit. I thank you for being in honest in your intentions, Naruto. I knew Ozai would not take kindly to such actions once he's learned about them. Said Iroh with a nod, knowing no one else would have revealed the truth and simply let them walk into a trap. Don't thank me, since this is all I can tell and do for you, out of respect for our shared masters and for helping me with my lightning bending. After this, I will be performing my duty as a fire army general and bring you both in. And I've already hurt Azula enough, I'm not going to do anything that will hurt her more. Naruto said, feeling at guilty for his part in putting Azula in her current state, with Iroh frowning at the latter part. What happened to Azula? questioned Iroh, wondering what's wrong with his niece, making Naruto look down as he leaned against the wall. It was after I was summoned by Ozai and given the mission to help her capture you and Zuko then hunt down the Avatar. She tried threatening me, thinking I'd be a loyal lapdog she could boss around, but when I didn't and pushed her a little resulting in her she trying to attack me, only to be reprimanded by Ozai and compared to Zuko. Then on the ship she tried threatening the crew only for me to stop her, before trying to intimidate me again, only to fail, again, and I may have, made a joke about her, red tides, and she attacked me again. 
I deflected her attack and we started arguing until she challenged me to an Agni Kai, which you already know how that went. Now she's just, Naruto said before sighing and smacking his head against the wall. Just what? Iroh asked, feeling a little concerned for Azula. She's just a 14-year-old girl, who's basically lost everything in just a few days. I've heard how everyone is afraid of her except her father, probably the only person who actually acknowledges her, only now he's written her off. Because I kept pushing her and refused to bow down, along with now having engaged her to someone she doesn't even know and likely hates with what I've done. With Ozai now forcing her to share a room with me, while also being seen as a firebending prodigy, only to now lose that too when I beat her, along with redirecting her lightning. Now, she looks like she doesn't even care what happens to her anymore. Explained Naruto, dragging a hand down his face at remembering the state Azula was in. While Iroh looked at him with wide eyes, not believing what he just heard or the state Azula is now in, before looking away in guilt. Looking back on Azula's life and how she acted, even to her own family, Iroh would admit that every time he saw his niece, he only saw Ozai. Believing that she had the same lack of empathy and brutal ambition his brother did, it made Iroh keep his distance. Even Ursa, her own mother, hadn't shown Azula much love and care, putting most of her attention on Zuko, with her own scolding Azula any time she did something. With Iroh looking back on all those times, realizing that perhaps it wasn't just Azula being inherently cruel and wicked, she was just trying to get her mother's attention. And when that didn't work, she ran to the only person who did give her attention, Ozai. Is it really surprising then for her to turn out like her father, when he was the only one to acknowledge her? Iroh thought, seeing that he and Ursa had failed to be there for Azula when she needed someone. You should not be ashamed or feel guilt Naruto, the true fault lies with myself and her mother. When she needed someone the most, neither of us were there to help her, resulting in her instead turning to Ozai for support. Said Iroh before bowing to the High General. I can see that you wish to do right by my niece and help her, for that you have my gratitude. All I ask is that you take care of her, she needs someone that will always be there for her. Iroh said, with Naruto nodding in response. I'll do everything I can to help her. Naruto replied, knowing it may not be ideal, but knew he and Azula were going to be married and he wanted to make sure he did right by her, even if she wanted nothing to do with him. Later. After taking some time to collect himself and think over what he needs to do, Iroh returned home after the sun had already gone down, only to find Zuko in the middle of packing. Zuko, Iroh said, getting his nephew's attention, making the fire prince look at him with a smile on his face. Uncle, can you believe it? We're going home. After three long years, it's unbelievable. Zuko said, overjoyed that they were finally able to return home, even if he hasn't captured the avatar they could go home again. With the dragon of the west frowning at this, having hoped to get the chance to convince Zuko to not take the offer to return to the Fire Nation and avoid going into a trap. But now he's stuck in a conundrum, with Zuko's safety and Azula's mental health. It is unbelievable, I have never known my brother to regret anything, stated Iroh, knowing he needed to convince Zuko to not go with Naruto and Azula. Did you listen to the general? Fathers realized how important family is to him. He cares about me, retorted Zuko, losing his smile and started getting irritated with how his uncle wasn't as happy as he was. I care about you. I know Ozai, he isn't the kind of person who has regrets. And if he wants you back, well, I think it may not be for the reasons you imagine. Iroh said, trying to get him to see reason without revealing the truth. You don't know how my father feels about me. You don't know anything, Zuko shouted while walking past Iroh, refusing to lose this chance to go home. Prince Zuko, please, just think about this more, you shouldn't risk yourself like this. Let me go and speak with Ozai myself, to see what he truly feels and wants. Stay with General Naruto and your sister if you wish to help them hunt down the Avatar. Or stay here for a few more days to enjoy the time of peace and relaxation. Said Iroh feeling he was the main priority for Ozai and he wouldn't lose much sleep if Zuko wasn't present when Naruto and Azula brought him in. What is your problem? I thought you'd be happy to go home, happy that I wouldn't just be the banished prince anymore. Yelled Zuko, glaring at his uncle, now believing he didn't want him to go home at all. 
I didn't mean that, Zuko. I only meant that in our family, things are not always what they seem. Iroh assured, especially after having learned how true that is after speaking with Naruto. I think you are exactly what you seem. A lazy, mistrustful, shallow old man who's always been jealous of his brother. Zuko retorted before walking off, not caring if he refused to join them, he wasn't going to lose his chance to return home. With Iroh watching him go sadly before sighing and went to grab some paper and a brush, knowing what he needed to do to ensure his nephew and niece were both safe. With Azula. Meanwhile, Azula was on the deck of the ship alone, training her firebending. Taking the chance when no one else is around given how her abilities seem to be deteriorating. The fire princess scowling as she went through the motions to create lightning, only now her lightning wasn't even appearing anymore as she did so. While only shooting out a stream of flames whenever she thrust her hand forward to fire it. No, 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 no. Come on. Where is the lightning? Azula thought, getting frustrated and a little worried that she seems unable to even create lightning anymore. Before her eyes widened when she shot out another blast of fire, seeing her blue flames flickering out of existence until they turned into a regular orange color. No, 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 no. Azula said repeatedly as she tried creating more flames, only to see they were no longer blue at all, being completely orange, much to her horror at her fire being weakened now. WH what? What is wrong with me? Azula screamed, releasing waves of flames around her, not believing she's not only lost her lightning but now she's losing her fire as well. No, no, I'm not losing my fire. I'm one of the best firebenders in the world. I have flames that no one else could hope to possess. Thought Azula as she took several deep breaths. I'm a prodigy, I am the firebending prodigy, and I am not going to let this get the better of me. Azula muttered to Psyche herself up. Only for her fire to not go back to being blue and remained orange, no matter what she said or thought to encourage herself. Going through all the familiar motions of her firebending, but there wasn't even a flicker of blue flames. What? What is wrong with me? said Azula, looking at her shaking hands, terrified at the idea she was really losing her bending now, not knowing how to react to any of this. Having spent her entire life as her father's golden child, being revered and praised for her abilities, leading her to never have to really deal with failure. But with everything that's happened in such a short amount of time, now seeing a chance she's losing her bending. Azula wasn't sure how she was supposed to react or deal with this. There's nothing wrong with you, Azula, Naruto said, making her jump slightly and look at him with narrowed eyes. How long were you standing there? Azula demanded, not wanting him or anyone to see her weakened fire, with the whiskered firebender going over to her. Long enough. Your form is really good, but I can see your flames are getting weaker. Stated Naruto, the ravenette scowling at him before unleashing jet of flames. My fire is as strong as ever. I simply don't see a reason to use my full strength in training. And never say anything about me as weak. I am not weak and I am not a failure. Shouted Azula while giving him a glare, seeing he still didn't look at her with any fear or wariness. There's nothing wrong with failing Azula, our failures are an opportunity to try again. They help us learn and grow to improve ourselves. Naruto said, making the fire princess scoff at him. What would you know about failing? You're the amazing, and, talented, high general, the youngest commanding officer in the fire army. I doubt you've ever failed at anything. Azula retorted bitterly, not thinking he's failed at anything before. You'd be surprised. Before I was even in the military academy, I left the fire nation to find someone to teach me firebending since I didn't have anyone who could teach me. I ended up getting caught in a storm with barely any supplies and was completely lost. Then when I joined the academy, I had an inflated ego since I had won several firebending matches to get noticed and sponsored by a high-ranking officer, I ended up challenging some of the older recruits and was lucky they didn't decide to burn me for being arrogant. When I was also first promoted and given command of my own men, we were sent to deal with a division of earthbenders. We defeated them and I gave them the chance to surrender, which they accepted, only for it to be a trick as there had been more than we expected, leading to us getting ambushed. We managed to defeat the earthbenders again, even with their backup, but it cost men and women under me their lives, simply because I chose to give them mercy. 
Though I didn't give them a second chance afterwards. We've all failed before Azula, especially me. But I don't let it keep me down. I learn and grow from my failures. And I know you can too. I also know that while we haven't known each other long or much about the other, from what I've seen of you, you're stronger than you know and won't let anything keep you down, let alone something like this. Naruto said, looking at Azula, who looked at him in surprise to hear he's failed before along with his words to her. Who? Who trained you? Questioned Azula, wondering who even trained Naruto to firebend. Some old firebenders I encountered after finally managing to reach the colonies, they were pretty old and passed away not long after I finished my training. But what they taught me has helped my firebending be better than it ever could have been. One lesson they told me is the most important one any firebender could learn. Replied Naruto, making Azula perk up. What lesson? Azula said, trying to hide her eagerness and desperation, hoping whatever lesson it was could restore her bending. Give me your hands, Naruto said holding his hands out, with Azula placing her hands over his watching as he made a small flame over them. Now look at the fire and I mean really look at it. Past the destruction it can cause, the hatred, rage, and anger that's believed to fuel it. See what fire truly is, said Naruto, slowly removing his hands as Azula maintained the flame herself, watching it closely. It's, 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 said Azula, not sure what she was supposed to see or find. Beautiful. It's a lot like you Azula. Fire can be beautiful to see and feel, but it can also hurt if you get too close. Though that's not all. Fire isn't just destruction and pain, it's warmth, energy and light. Just like you Azula, your fire doesn't have to just destroy and cause pain, it's so much more than that. There's more to you as well. Naruto said making Azula look up at him in surprise before looking back at the flame, gasping when it flickered blue for a moment. Fire is, Azula said, only to frown and shake her head, narrowing her eyes at Naruto. Fire is destruction. It's power and has nothing to with such nonsense. Whoever taught you such things are obviously nothing but disgraces to firebenders everywhere, if they'd teach such weak and foolish beliefs. Said Azula, remembering all her lessons of what firebending is meant to be, that it was power, destruction and was empowered by rage. With Naruto sighing as Azula walked past him back into the ship, having hoped she'd be able to learn the same lesson that Ran and Shaw, and the Sun Warriors taught him of what firebending truly was. Though it seemed her upbringing and being told what firebending is, was stronger than he thought. But I did reach her, even if it was for a moment. I can help Azula and I will. Naruto thought knowing he can get through to Azula and didn't plan to stop until he helped her. And maybe one day, he'd be able to let her learn what firebending really is from the masters themselves. Time skip one day asterisk. The next morning, Zuko and Iroh headed down to the ship, the banished prince being happy when his uncle arrived to join him, having thought he'd refuse to come back. With Iroh looking at the lines of imperial firebenders suspiciously, knowing they were meant to make sure they didn't escape. Before arriving at the gangplank leading up to the ship, where Naruto and Azula stood at the top waiting for them. Brother. Uncle. Welcome. I'm so glad you decided to come. Said Azula with a smile, while Zuko and Iroh frowned at her appearance, as if she hasn't slept in days or cared about how she looked. Azula are, are you alright? Zuko asked, feeling a rare bout of concern for his sister and her current state. I'm fine. Are we going or not? Azula snapped making Zuko's frown deepen while Iroh looked away in guilt at now seeing what the effect his actions and inaction had on his niece. Set a course for the Fire Nation captain, we're going home. Said Naruto, hoping Iroh had a plan to get them out of this, otherwise the moment they left they would be prisoners. Home, muttered Zuko wistfully, wondering if anything's changed since his banishment, before he and Iroh began walking up the gangplank to the ship. You heard the general, raise the anchors. We're taking the prisoners home. The captain said, only for his eyes to widen at what he just said, with Zuko's eyes widening at realizing what's really happening, while Azula glared murderously at the captain and Naruto facepalmed. I think it's safe to say that Imperial firebenders weren't given their position because of their skill and intelligence, if this dumbass is a captain. Naruto thought, not believing anyone could be that incompetent. Not a moment later Iroh slammed his bag into a guard's head before kicking another way, launching a blast of fire at one behind him before pushing a fourth off the plank. 
grabbing one and spinning around before throwing them into the water as well. While Zuko grabbed the captain and threw him into the water while running up the gangplank, glaring at Naruto and Azula. You lied to me, Zuko shouted, angry that he fell for more of Azula's lies. Like I've never done that before. But I technically didn't lie, not that it'll matter in a few moments. Said Azula with a smirk before kicking her leg towards her brother, releasing a blast of flames at Zuko with him noticing that they weren't their normal blue, but the standard orange they once were when they were kids. Jumping over the flames, Zuko thrust his fist forward, shooting a fireball at them with two guards getting in front of Naruto and Azula, releasing jets of flames that dispersed it. Before jumping up, using their shoulders as steps to get higher, swinging his leg and releasing a wave of flames at Zuko, who quickly shot fire out of his feet pushing him back where he landed on the dock. But before he could fire more flames at them, he was suddenly grabbed and pushed back by Iroh who got in front of him. Zuko. Get out of here now, I'll hold them off. Iroh said before creating a large fireball and launched it at the guard running down the gangplank, throwing them against the ship or into the water. What? I'm not going to, said Zuko, refusing to run away or abandon his uncle, only to be pushed back while also feeling something being slipped into his robes by his uncle, before a wall of fire rose up between them. Zuko, for once just listen to what I'm telling you. Go now, I'll catch up with you soon, said Iroh, leaving no room for arguing, making Zuko look at him with wide eyes before he reluctantly nodded. Fine, but you better hurry up. Zuko said before he ran down the dock to escape, hoping that his uncle will be able to get away. Seeing his nephew escape, Iroh nodded before quickly turning around and threw his arms out, dispelling a large wave of flames from the guards. Rotating his arms and manipulating the flames into a fireball before pulling his hands back only to thrust them forward. Turning the fireball into a massive blast of fire that threw the guards back. Before Naruto split the fire in half down the middle, with Azula shooting jets of fire out of her hands and feet, propelling herself towards Iroh. Flipping in the air, Azula launched an arc of fire at her uncle, who span around the flames before creating a fire whip from his hand which he launched at Azula. The fire princess responded by creating her own fire whip that clashed against Iroh's. With Naruto propelling himself into the air to get behind Iroh, launching himself at the ground, slamming his down and unleashing a wave of flames towards the former general. Looking at the wave of flames, Iroh kicked his leg back, shooting out a jet of fire that cut through the wave, while Naruto propelled himself off to the side when the flames rushed towards him. Shooting several fireballs at Iroh as he moved through the air, who proved more agile than he looked as he spun around the fireballs before his cheeks bulged out and threw his head back. Naruto's eyes widened at this before he quickly propelled himself into the air, just as Iroh unleashed a gigantic blast of fire from his mouth causing the water to start steaming from the intense heat. With Azula quickly getting out of the way as Iroh moved around, unleashing his fire breath all around him, hitting any guards unfortunate enough to not get out of the way and were thrown through the air. Until Iroh aimed his flames into the air when Naruto moved above him and unleashed his own fire breath, the streams of flames colliding against each other. Only for the flames to stop when Iroh cried out as Azula got behind her uncle, unleashing a jet of fire at his back, sending Iroh crashing down the dock. Getting up shakily, Iroh was forced to move back as Azula continued firing waves of fire at him, moving up the gangplank and onto the ship. Before he stumbled slightly when the fire princess slid her foot across the ground, releasing a wave of fire at his feet. Seeing this, Azula created a flame at the tip of her fingers before thrusting it forward, unleashing an explosive burst of flames. The dragon of the west crying out as the flames hit him, sending him skidding across the ship, groaning as he tried getting back up only to fall to the ground unconscious. Much to Azula's shock at seeing her uncle taken down, by her own hand. What? No, 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 that doesn't make sense. Azula thought, not believing she actually managed to take her uncle down before looking to where Zuko ran off. Narrowing her eyes at seeing her brother manage to get away before scowling at her uncle, knowing that something was going on with Zuko. Meanwhile, Zuko had run as fast as he could from the ship, looking back once he was at the stairs, only to see his uncle being overwhelmed. Making him tempted to run back to help him, but didn't since Iroh had wanted him to keep running. And he did, 
the banished prince kept running until he soon reached a river, feeling he'd gotten far enough away. With him then falling to his hands and knees, stuck in a state of shock and self-loathing, not believing his uncle would let himself be captured for him. And angry at himself that this happened in the first place, just because he believed his father wanted him back home. Damn it. Why can't I do anything right? Zuko thought, hating that it seems like he can do nothing but fail ever since his banishment. Before remembering his uncle had slipped something into his robes, pulling it out only to be surprised to see it was a wrapped bundle of scrolls. Opening one of them, Zuko saw it was a firebending scroll while seeing that the rest of them were the same, along with a scroll on lightning generation and redirection. Uncle, why did you do this? Were you planning to let yourself be captured? Thought Zuko in disbelief that his uncle would give him these, as if knowing he would be captured before seeing another smaller scroll, opening it to see it was a letter. Zuko, if you're reading this, then it means I have let myself be captured by Azula and Naruto. Please do not blame yourself for this my nephew, it was my choice to let them take me prisoner, so that I may fix my mistakes. I was never there for your sister when she needed someone, I only ever saw my brother in her. A lack of empathy, cruelty, burning ambition, and the inability to love or care for another. But now I see how I failed her, by seeing only Ozai in her, that is who she ran to. I know you seek your father's love and approval, but please understand this nephew, I have known Ozai his entire life. I have seen what he is capable of, and my brother is incapable of loving anyone but himself. He cares not about the feelings of others, even his own family is not safe from his cruelty, as you have seen and now it seems Azula has seen it as well. That is what makes you both different, you and your sister, you both possess a battle within yourselves, that of good and evil, for it is your nature, your legacy. You know of your great-grandfather Sozin on your father's side, but what you do not know is your mother's grandfather, Avatar Roku. The two of you are descendants of the man who started the Hundred Year War and the man who opposed him. It is why you have struggled with yourself for so long Zuko, the battle between your great-grandfathers still exists within you. It was a battle I believe Azula had lost, giving in to the evil of our family, but I have learned it is still going on and could break her if she is not helped. Zuko. Despite the circumstances, the past three years I have spent with you have been some of the happiest moments in my life and I am proud of you, nephew. But now Azula needs my help more, just as you did, and it is time for you to figure out who you really want to be. Should our paths ever cross again, I look forward to seeing the man you have become. Uncle Iroh. P.S. The scrolls with you are to help you complete your firebending training as well as the knowledge of lightning generation, along with how to redirect it, a technique I created myself. Good luck and good journeys, Prince Zuko. Zuko looked at the letter in shock with tears in his eyes, not believing that he and Azula were the great-grandchildren of Avatar Roku. But more than that, despite how he treated him at times, his uncle still cherished the time they spent together ever since he was banished. Uncle, I promise, I won't let you down and I will return for you one day. Zuko swore, refusing to let his uncle down after he gave himself up so he could escape and that he would free him one day, when he was ready. Before he pulled out his pearl-handled dagger, looking at the inscription on it. Never give up without a fight, I don't plan to give up ever. Thought Zuko before grabbing his ponytail and cut it off, knowing it'd make him too recognizable. Dropping it in the river, Zuko wrapped the scrolls and note before he continued running, just in case guards would be sent after him. Later Royal Sloop. Back on the Royal Sloop, Azula was being congratulated by the soldiers and crew members for succeeding in taking down and capturing the Dragon of the West. With the Ravenet only able to give half-hearted, unsatisfied responses before quickly slipping away from everyone. Not feeling like she really earned the right to celebrate defeating her uncle, if she even really defeated him. Before she headed down to the brig to the cell where Iroh, glaring at her uncle as he simply sat down as if he wasn't a prisoner. You seem to have recovered quickly. Most other people would still be unconscious after getting hit like that. Azula stated accusingly. I have simply become used to hiding the true extent of my injuries, Princess Azula. The battlefield isn't a good place to focus on being hurt. Replied Iroh, which only made Azula growl while grabbing the bars. I'm not in the mood for your games. You let yourself be captured, tell me why. Azula demanded, knowing despite his age, 
her uncle could have defeated them all without even trying, with only Naruto likely lasting the longest. Is it so wrong for an uncle to want to spend time with his niece after so many years? Iroh asked, angering Azula further. I said no games, shouted Azula, only for Iroh to look at her seriously. It's no game Azula. I have learned, that I wasn't fair to you during your childhood. I was never there for you when you needed someone to care about you, and it pushed you straight into Ozai's arms. I know it's something I cannot change, but I can hope to be there for you now. And right now, all I can do is apologize for never helping you when I could," replied Iroh while bowing his head, making the Fire Princess glare at him. Don't pretend to act like you care. I know what you really think of me, you think I'm a monster. Just like everyone else, just like her. Azula retorted, only for Iroh to shake his head. I never saw you as a monster Azula, but that's what you wanted everyone to see you as. You wanted people to fear you, fear you enough that they wouldn't leave you alone. But you don't have to be alone anymore, I wish to be there for you now. And it would seem your new betrothed also wishes to be there for you, as well. Iroh said, with Azula scoffing. I don't want you or him there or anywhere for me. Trust is for fools. Fear is the only reliable way. You fear me too. Even, even my own mother, my own mother feared me. That's, that's all I have. Fear, being a prodigy, being father's favorite, and now I come I have nothing. Yelled Azula before losing her fire and looked down, shaking at how her mother saw her as a monster and was afraid of her, that she'd now lost the only things she had to begin with. You're wrong. I didn't fear you either. You were my niece and I do love you Azula. I'm sorry for not showing that better and trying harder. I never realized how much your mother and I failed you, until now. All I can do is try my best to make up for my failure and help you in any way I can. And you don't have nothing, if only you'd look beyond what Ozai has taught you, then you would see you have more than you can imagine. Said Iroh, the ravenette punched the bars and glare at him. Shut up. Just shut up already. I don't need you, Naruto, mother or anyone else. You should be more worried about the hole you'll be thrown into and left to rot in for the rest of your miserable life, old man. Azula said, hoping to get a familiar reaction out of him, only for Iroh to simply bow his head. I will still be around should you need anything Azula or simply wish to talk. After all, I will be having plenty of time on my hands soon. And I will be happy to talk to you, whenever you need me. Iroh stated. His words only making Azula scream before releasing a jet of fire at her uncle her eyes widening as the flames fizzled out before they could even reach him. Not looking at Iroh again, Azula immediately rushed out of the room, not knowing what to do or what to believe anymore. Finding herself running back to hers and Naruto's room, finding the whiskered firebender already inside, with Naruto taking notice of the state she was in. Not saying anything, Naruto went up to Azula and wrapped an arm around her shoulder, the fire princess not having the strength to even push him away. Guiding her over to the bed, Naruto sat them down with Azula simply looking at her lap. My offer still stands, if you want to talk about anything, I'll listen. Or we can just sit here for however long you want. Said Naruto, wanting her to know he's here if she has anything she wants to talk about. I come I went, I went to see my uncle, we, we talked and he, he tried saying he, he regrets not being there, for me. That, that he was sorry and, and wants to make up for it. I come I didn't, I didn't believe him, I tried to. I tried to hit him with my firebending but, but my fire, it didn't even reach him, Azula said, feeling tears in her eyes but refused to let them fall or be seen. Why did you go to him? Naruto asked, looking at her curiously. I don't know, okay. I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I even came here. I don't even know why I'm telling you anything. You don't care either, yelled Azula, trying to keep up a strong front and failing at it. Yes I do. I know I haven't acted like it, but I do care Azula and I want to help you," said Naruto, only for the ravenette to try and push him away. No you don't. And I don't care what you want to do, I was perfectly fine before you showed up. You, you ruined everything, you ruined me. Just, just go, go somewhere else," said Azula, trying and failing to push him away before eventually giving up from her mentally and emotionally fragile state. With Naruto looking at her sadly before standing up and lifting her up onto the bed, laying the fire princess down, with Azula immediately turning away from him. The high general then set up a futon on the ground, giving Azula one last look before lying down. After Iroh was captured, the royal sloop had left the village resort. Though rather than returning to the Fire Nation with their prisoner, 
Naruto and Azula intended to fulfill the other part of their mission, locating and capturing the Avatar. With the High General also taking the chance to speak with Iroh once the sun began setting, wanting to speak to him about Azula. So, what do you think? Naruto asked, sitting in front of Iroh's cell, wanting to know what he thought of Azula's current state. I see what you meant now. Azula truly believes that the only thing she's ever had are fear, Ozai's favor and being a firebending prodigy. Now she thinks in just a few short days, she's lost all three, and I can see it's affecting her firebending as well," said Iroh, having seen how Azula's flames were no longer blue nor as strong when they hit him. I know, she can't even create lightning anymore. Though, I was able to get through to her a little the other night, talking to her about some of my own failures and about my training. I didn't tell her anything about who trained me, but I did try getting her to understand what firebending truly is," said Naruto, assuring Iroh he didn't say anything about the Sun Warriors nor Ran and Shaw. Did it work? questioned Iroh, knowing how ingrained it is in the Fire Nation, the belief that firebending is fueled by rage, hatred and anger, forgetting what it originally was. For a moment it did, her fire even turned blue again for a brief moment, but I'm guessing it'll take longer to really get through to her with how long she's believed firebending is used only for destruction. I was even hoping that once she starts opening up more, she'd be able to learn it personally from them." Naruto replied, surprising Iroh that he'd actually consider taking Azula to learn from Ran and Shaw. That may work, but something to do when you are absolutely sure she has a chance at passing their judgment. I'm afraid as she is now, my niece would most definitely be devoured. I believe the best thing to do is to find ways to help her open up, ways that will make Azula care or at least feel something besides anger and hate. Iroh said, thinking it'd be a good start in getting Azula to open up more first. That's not going to be easy, it seems like Azula wants to care or feel something, but she doesn't know how. The only thing she's known are anger, fear and cruelty, that's what she believes makes her strong while actually caring about someone is a weakness. Said Naruto, something the Dragon of the West couldn't deny aware how his brother viewed such things and would have passed those views on to Azula. Then perhaps the solution isn't to make Azula open up, it's to find those that genuinely care for her. Which is a rather short list, unfortunately. Iroh replied, knowing the amount of people that genuinely cared about Azula could be counted on one hand. Any ideas on who I'd be able to find? Possibly those that wouldn't make her suspicious. Naruto said, since he didn't want to risk Azula closing herself off if she thought she was being manipulated by suddenly bringing in people she knew. I believe I can think of a couple. Stated Iroh, aware of people like that, specifically two that Azula knew quite well. Later with Azula Azula hadn't moved from her spot on the bed since returning from speaking with her uncle, not even saying anything when Naruto said he was leaving. The Fire Princess still trying to sort through her scattered emotions and thoughts. Before she looked at the door when she heard someone knocking at it, much to her annoyance as she sat up, only to see Naruto come in. Why do you waste time knocking? This is now your room as well. Said Azula in annoyance that he'd knock when they share a room now. Just making sure you were decent, since I doubt either of us would want a repeat of last time. Naruto replied, making the ravenette look away with a light blush at the reminder of her walking in on him in just a towel. Fine. What do you want? Azula demanded doubting he'd come back here unless he wanted something or wanted to try talking to her again. I came by to inform you that we have a meeting to attend, right now," said Naruto, with Azula looking at him with a raised brow. Why exactly would you need me to attend a meeting with you? In case you forgot, you're in charge of the ship and mission now," retorted Azula, looking away and crossing her arms. Because I would like it if my second-in-command was with me and would be able to offer her own suggestions, if she has any. Naruto said, the Fire Princess's head snapping towards him in shock, not expecting him to want her to be his second in command. Wh what? Azula said in disbelief, not sure if this was a trick or not. My second in command, I would like it if you were there with me, Azula. Along with any future meetings, since I'm sure you'll have your own ideas on how to track down the Avatar, as well as being a good way for you to gain military experience. So let's go. Replied Naruto, motioning Azula to follow him snapping her out of her shock as she got up and exited the room. Well then, who else will be attending this meeting? Questioned Azula, wanting to know who else will be in attendance. Some of the soldiers under my command. Since you'll be my second in command, it'll be good for you to get familiarized with those you'll be working with and giving orders to, when I'm not around. Naruto said, 
with the ravenette nodding, a little intrigued at learning more about the soldiers he commands. Only being able to guess that with who they served under, then Naruto's soldiers must be powerful ones. With it not taking long before they arrived at the war room, with Azula seeing at least two dozen soldiers, possibly more than that. Though she frowned when she didn't see any Imperial firebenders present or that idiot captain. The latter she's actually thankful for, as Azula was still contemplating whether or not to incinerate him for his screw-up. Where are the Imperial firebenders? Azula asked, looking at Naruto, having thought some of them would be present since they were the guards of the royal family. I relieved them of their duty and sent them back to the Fire Nation, since the actions of their captain has made me question their competency and capabilities. And I'd personally prefer not taking the risk of that idiot not being able to think before he speaks again. Said Naruto, refusing to let the fool for a captain say something that'd ruin their mission again. With the royal procession while on a ship currently heading towards the Fire Nation, the Imperial Firebenders were all glaring at their captain's back, not believing they were dismissed because of him. With most of them considering throwing him overboard on their way home. All while the captain glanced back at them nervously, hoping he'd survive the trip back to the Fire Nation. Royal sloop, fair enough. Azula muttered, seeing where he's coming from and knew the royal procession would just be deadweight. Before she looked back at Naruto's soldiers, narrowing her eyes when she took a closer look at all of them. Seeing that while some of them were wearing the standard black and red fire army uniforms with the helmets and skull masks. Others were wearing modified uniforms that looked to provide them more freedom in moving and carrying different kinds of weapons, guessing they must be non-benders along with seeing a few wearing uniforms that were blue and red, and those wearing green and red uniforms. Why aren't they all wearing the standard uniforms? And why are they wearing different colors? Asked Azula, narrowing her eyes at the soldiers. I'm sure you can guess the ones with weapons are non-benders, while the ones in blue and green, they're benders just not firebenders. Unlike the rest of the fire army, I don't just have firebenders and non-benders under my command, I have earthbenders and waterbenders as well though not many of the latter given the circumstances. Naruto revealed, much to Azula's shock that he actually had earthbenders and waterbenders under his command, before scoffing at the idea of it. Well at least now I know why I've heard nothing about your division. If you actually waste time recruiting cannon fodder, muscle-headed fools that play in the mud, and more cannon fodder that's useless on land. Azula said in distaste at the idea of working with waterbenders and earthbenders, much to the anger of those she insulted. Because those guards you had were real top-notch firebenders, especially the captain that couldn't keep his mouth shut, stated a non-bender. And how long has the Fire Nation been trying to take control of Ba Sing Se? A hundred years now, I guess playing in the mud all day is better training than anything the Fire Nation has. An earthbender added with a smirk, getting a few laughs from the other soldiers. I'm sure Admiral Zhao would be able to teach them a thing or two. Oh wait, he's dead and at the bottom of the ocean just like his entire fleet and everyone under his command," said a waterbender tauntingly, with Azula being angered at their words and insults to the Fire Nation. Let's see how good your little toys are when they're burned to ash and melted slag. Or perhaps you'd like to see Omashu again, after that fool for a king surrendered his own city without a fight. Maybe see what's left of the Southern Water Tribe after the Fire Nation crushed them," Azula retorted, glaring at the soldiers, who returned the glares. Enough. Naruto shouted, causing all the soldiers to immediately stand up straight, with the blonde general looking at them with narrowed eyes. I won't have any of you wasting time arguing over petty squabbles or grudges, that includes you, Azula, said Naruto, turning to his fiancée, who unconsciously stood straight and firm under his gaze. I've already told you all this before, but it seems you need to hear it again. I don't care what nation you hail from, I don't care if you're a bender or non-bender. I don't care if you're a nobleman or a commoner. What I care about are your actions and proving what you can do. Non-bender, firebender, waterbender, earthbender, or even airbenders if we miraculously enough find and recruit some, none of it matters on the battlefield. You train together, you rest together, you fight together, and you watch each other's backs. If you have problems with each other then you settle them during training. Otherwise I expect you all to act like everyone else you fight alongside. One unit, one group of people one nation. Am I understood? Naruto demanded, looking over the soldiers. Sir yes sir, said all the soldiers, making the whiskered firebender nod before he turned back to Azula. And you, I also don't care what prejudice or feelings you have towards anyone else, but you will treat everyone here with respect. 
Every soldiers under my command, whether they originally hailed from the Fire Nation or not, whether they're firebenders or not, they fight and protect each other. They would die for each other if it came to it, because they know it doesn't matter where you come from or who you are. They've all proven time and again they're loyal and I trust each and every one of them with my own life. So, I expect you to respect them, if you have any issues then you'll bring them to me, if you want to whine and complain about where they come from or who they are, then you'll stay quiet, because no one here will put up with childish insults or taunts. Is that clear? Naruto said, with Azula looking at him with wide eyes, not expecting to see such a stern side from her fiancé. Along with seeing how none of the soldiers looked upset about being talked down to, some even looked ashamed of themselves for their behavior. Being taken aback at the affect he had on those under his command, seeing he wasn't just a powerful firebender, but also had the charisma and resolve needed to lead. Why yes, yes, it's clear. Azula said, nodding in response, with Naruto nodding as well. Good. Now then, the reason for this meeting is that we'll be adding some new members to our forces to hunt and capture the Avatar. Said Naruto, causing Azula's mood to turn to annoyance. I don't see why we'd need any more help. It seems like we have all that we need to find the Avatar. Said Azula, doubting they'd need any help in capturing the Avatar given Naruto's abilities and the soldiers under his command they'd likely be able to capture the avatar without any problems. Well it doesn't hurt to be completely prepared. Especially since we're dealing with an airbender, which no one has ever fought before in the past hundred years, that's not counting if he can access avatar state at will. So, we'll be getting those that can track, incapacitate and capture the avatar, while already having three recruits in mind. Two of them are noblewomen from the Fire Nation, while the third is a bounty hunter that I've worked with in the past. The first two are called Mai and Tai Li, while the bounty hunter is named Jun. Naruto explained, with Azula's head snapping towards him with a shocked expression at hearing Mai's and Tai Li's names. Why these three specifically, General? Questioned a soldier, none of them being sure why these three were chosen. From the reports I've read on past encounters with the Avatar, he was evenly matched and taken down by the Yuyan archers after they were employed by the late Admiral Zhao with them even being able to incapacitate and capture him. I also plan to contact Colonel Shinyu to have some of the Yuyan archers added to our forces as well. And from what I've heard, Mai is an excellent markswoman herself, being skilled at using throwing knives and stilettos. Which will make her a valuable addition, just like the Yuyan archers. As for Tai Li, she's an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat, specifically having the ability to Kai block and preventing benders from using their bending, which is also something that I'll expect everyone to learn, myself included. And for June, she's a skilled bounty hunter and has a Shurshu as a companion. For those that don't know, a Shurshu's sense of smell could track anything or anyone, no matter how far away they are, along with having saliva that can paralyze anyone they hit and can be made into Shurshu spit darts. Naruto explained, making the soldiers nod in understanding, seeing why the three were being recruited and that they would have useful skills and abilities. That's all for now. You're dismissed, said Naruto, ending the meeting as he went to leave, only to be stopped by Azula. How do you know about Mai and Tai Li? Azula demanded, looking at him suspiciously, given how her only friends just happened to be chosen by him to help hunt down the Avatar, she thought he was up to something. I read up on the noble families and clans in the Fire Nations after joining the military academy, since I wanted to know everything I could in case I ever met any of them, with Mai's and Tai Li's families being among them. While I learned about Tai Li and her Kai blocking after researching different fighting styles that I could learn, should I ever be in a situation where I can't use my firebending, while learning about Kai blocking and that she's a master at it with her knowledge of the human body and acrobatics. And my, I learned about her after Omashu was conquered and Governor Ukano was put in charge, learning about him and his family should I ever end up in Omashu, with Mai's talent with throwing knives being something I wish to learn as well. Replied Naruto having already come up with a convincing excuse as to how he knew about Mai and Tai Li, as well as his decision to recruit them, with the Ravenette looking at him with narrowed eyes. And you had no idea I knew them, said Azula, with the whiskered firebender shaking his head. No, this is the first I'm hearing that you knew them, but hopefully that'll make it easier to recruit them, if you're there, Naruto said before taking his leave with Azula watching him go. Before looking back at the soldiers, noticing how some of the female soldiers were giving her a stink eye, making Azula glare at them for a moment before turning her back to them, brushing them off as the ravenette took her leave, with the female soldiers leaving with a huff as well. 
Asterisk time skip one day asterisk after docking the ship in the Fire Nation colonies, Naruto had sent out some soldiers to locate where Jun was, knowing she moved around a lot wherever there was a new bounty or money to be made. While he and Azula had gone to where they heard the Fire Nation circus was setting up for their next show, which is where they would find Tai Lee. Arriving at the circus just as they were finishing setting everything up for the show they'd be performing tonight. Walking through the grounds, Naruto and Azula soon found Tai Lee in the middle of practicing her acrobatics, with the whiskered firebender also getting his first look at Tai Lee. Seeing she's the same age as Azula with fair skin, long brown hair in a braid at the top of her head and went down to the middle of her back, as well as brown gray eyes. With her wearing gray pink slippers, baggy, light pink pants that stopped just below her knees, a dark pink skirt divided into multiple pieces, a light pink crop top that exposed her midsection and baggy sleeves that stopped above her elbows, a dark pink shoulder cape, and dark pink wristbands. She's really good, Naruto thought, seeing how effortlessly Tai Lee was doing a handstand with just her index fingers, not looking the least bit tired or strained. Tai Lee. Could that possibly be you? Said Azula at seeing her old friend again, with Tai Lee looking at her in surprise before smiling brightly. Azula. Tai Lee said before flipping back onto her feet, giving a twirl and bowing to the fire princess before running forward and hugging her. It is so good to see you. Said Tai Lee, happy to see her friend again, only to lose her smile when she felt something different about Azula. Please, don't let me interrupt you. Whatever it is you were doing. Azula said, only to see the brunette look at her in concern. Azula, are you alright? Your aura, it's so, dull and empty. It's not the same bright blue it always is, it's just, really blank now. Tai Lee said, along with seeing Azula's appearance was off as well, seeing her friend looked like she hasn't been sleeping. I'm perfectly fine. Don't worry about it, said Azula, snapping a little, making Tai Lee flinch slightly and frown. Are you sure? If something's wrong, I'd like it if I would be able to help Azula, we're friends after all. Besides, I don't like your aura like this, it looked much better before. So, is there anything I can help with? Questioned Tai Lee, shocking Azula at her concern and how, genuine she sounded. I I I'm fine, like I said, I I am per perfectly fine. Why your C concern is appreciated, B but unnecessary. Azula replied while stepping away from Tai Lee making her frown deepen before taking notice of Naruto. Ooh, I didn't know Azula was friends with such a cutie. Thought Tai Lee while admiring the handsome blonde. Hello there. I didn't know Azula would be bringing a friend, especially such a cute one. Tai Lee said with a flirtatious smile, surprising Naruto slightly at her forwardness. Uh, yeah, it's nice to meet you too, Tai Lee. Said Naruto, holding out his hand which Tai Lee shook her smile growing as she felt his aura. Wow. You have such an amazing aura. It's like looking at a swirling rainbow of colors. The blue also looks so much like Azula's, being such a pretty color. But it also looks dangerous like Azula's, but in a good way. Said Tai Lee. Yes, wonderful. Anyway, Tai Lee this is General Naruto of the Fire Army, he's also my, betrothed. Azula said, surprising Tai Lee at learning who he was, having heard of General Naruto the up-and-coming famous High General, the youngest in Fire Nation history. Wow, and Azula gets to marry him, she's so lucky. Tai Lee thought, not believing her friend was getting the chance to marry Naruto. Before her moment of awe and initial reaction turned to wariness, given how Azula seemed upset about referring to him as her fiancé. Wondering if he had something to do with the state she's now in. Oh, that's nice to hear. What do you think of Azula, Naruto? And how did you two become engaged? Tai Lee asked, wanting to see if he was hurting her friend in any way. Do you have somewhere private we can talk? Said Azula, preferring if no one overheard what was said. Looking between them for a few moments, Tai Lee nodded before taking them to her dressing room, where they all sat down. So, what happened? Questioned Tai Lee, wanting to know what's happened to her friend to make her like this. With Naruto and Azula telling her everything that happened, mostly Naruto whenever Azula got too upset to speak. The High General not leaving out any part, including his own hand in pushing Azula, with the Ravenette also reluctantly telling Tai Lee about her deteriorating firebending. Finishing it by telling the Brunette about their intentions for finding her, to help hunt down the Avatar. I I see, a lots, a lots really happened the past few days. Tai Lee muttered, 
shocked at how much Azula's been through in just a few days. Yes, a lot has happened. Now will you come with us or not? Demanded Azula, not liking to talk about what's happened, especially with her firebending not working right anymore. Tai Li looked between for a few moments before looking at Naruto, unable to actually blame him for what's happened, despite how he pushed Azula, seeing that he did feel bad and wanted to make it up to her. But for the first time in her life, Tai Li found herself holding a grudge against someone, blaming Fire Lord Ozai for hurting Azula like this. With her getting up and going over to hug Azula, surprising the Fire Princess at the sudden action. Before I answer that, I just want you to know how sorry I am that I wasn't around to help, Azula. But this time, I promise I'll always be there for you, no matter what, and I don't plan on leaving you again. Said Tai Li smiling at Azula, who looked at her in shock as she definitely wasn't expecting that. I comma I need to go. Azula said, before quickly getting up and leaving the tent, not knowing how she was supposed to respond to such things. While Naruto and Tai Li watched her leave in concern before they turned to each other. I'll go with you both. I guess it's time for a career change, anyway. But would both of you be able to at least stay for tonight's show, since it'll be my last show and I'd really like Azula to see it? Tai Li said, hoping they'll be able to stay for her last show. I don't think there'll be a problem staying for one night. Replied Naruto with a smile, making the Kai blocker smile brightly that they'll stay for the show, while planning to talk to Shuzumu about making a few changes to her performance. Later, why are we wasting our time here, still? Tai Li's already agreed to help us, we should just leave rather than continue wasting time on this nonsense, said Azula, annoyed that they were now stuck having to see the performance tonight, instead of continuing on their way to hunt down the avatar. We're staying because Tai Li wants us to see her perform, at least once, and you should take the opportunity to relax and enjoy yourself, you may even like the show, Naruto replied, with Azula crossing her arms stubbornly. Relaxing is for fools that aren't trying their best and I'll enjoy myself once we start hunting down the avatar. Which we should be doing right now. Azula retorted, making Naruto look at her with a raised brow. You really need to get a hobby. Have you tried flower pressing? I hear girls like that. Naruto said with a smirk, with the fire princess glaring at him blankly. I will burn you. Growled Azula, holding up two fingers to shoot a fireball at him. Unless your hobby is practicing your smirk in the mirror. That would explain why you seem to take so long in the bathroom, you want to get it just right. Naruto said teasingly, with the ravenette growl lowly. If you don't stop pushing me, I swear I will burn that insolent tongue from your head, said Azula, swearing to make him regret his teasing, only for Naruto to turn serious. Azula, whether we like it or not, we are going to be married. It'd be best if we try to make this work as best as we can. This could even be considered our first date, said Naruto. Regardless of whether they liked it or not, they were going to get married and it would be best to see if they could at least see if they can develop genuine feelings for each other. I'd sooner listen to my senile uncle ramble on about tea all day. Azula retorted in annoyance, not liking the idea, especially the date part. But, fine. Since you're so insistent, we'll stay for the stupid show, then we're leaving right after. Added Azula, relenting to watch the performance just so they can hurry up and leave once it's over. Later Naruto and Azula sat in a high box seat as the stands were filled with people eager for the show to beginning. With performers in dragon costumes soon appearing and dancing around the main ring, until the ringmaster Shuzumu arrived, while those the costumes performers shot flames out of the dragon's mouths around him, getting a cheer from the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the show. Tonight we have a special treat for you all and we are deeply honored to have Princess Azula and General Naruto as our guests tonight. Now let the performance begin, declared Shuzumu, releasing jets of fire into the air while many fireworks went off in the air, much to the crowd's enjoyment. Azula watched the show with a bored and annoyed expression as platypus bears came out rolling around on top of balls, plate jugglers threw around plates and caught them with ease, while acrobats leapt around before jumping on top of each other in a pyramid formation. Come on, aren't you enjoying the show? Naruto asked smiling at the performance, with the ravenette giving him a side glance. It's doing an amazing job of putting me to sleep, stated Azula, making Naruto roll his eyes before turning back to the show. Though the fire princess perked up when firebenders came and began throwing fireballs around, rolling them across their arms and shoulders as if they were balls, juggled them around before throwing them into the air and exploded into rings that the acrobats jumped through, 
even letting out a laugh when the platypus bears jumped through the fire rings, landing back on their balls, and continued rolling around. Before the firebenders grabbed several balls and began juggling them around, throwing them through the air towards each other. Until they threw the balls into the air and shot small flames at them, causing the balls to explode into a shower of colorful sparks, making the crowd cheer at the performance. With even Azula clapping with a smile on her face, as she began forgetting about everything else and enjoying the show. They're, not afraid, they're enjoying seeing firebending being used, and it's, being used to entertain people, to make them smile and laugh. Azula thought, looking around at seeing the entire crowd was enjoying the show, even more so when the firebenders came out. The Ravenette also being shocked and awed at the sight, seeing firebending being used for entertainment, having never thought it could be used in a such a way. Before she remembered Naruto's words on it, that firebending was energy, light and warmth, that it was, beautiful. Only to shake her head at the thought. No. No, he was wrong. Firebending is nothing like that. It represents power, domination, and control. Even, even this is still firebending. They're controlling these fools, making them forget what firebending is truly capable of by making it seem harmless and playful. He was wrong. Azula thought, refusing to believe that Naruto was right about what firebending was. Yet you were able to momentarily return your flames to being blue when you listened to him and considered his words. Maybe he was telling the truth. Said a traitorous part of her mind, making Azula frown before shaking her head and violently squashing that part of her. No. He was wrong. Firebending is meant for destruction and control, that is what it truly is. Said Azula mentally, but despite her best efforts she could still feel it poking at the back of her mind. And now for the grand finale, in her final show with our circus. I give you, the magnificent Tai Li, Shuzumu announced, pulling Azula from her thoughts as the ringmaster motioned to the top of the tent, where Tai Li was balancing on a tightrope with just one hand. Everyone watched in amazement at Tai Li stayed perfectly balanced before switching to her other hand, only to be shocked when the brunette leaned forward and fell to the ground. With Tai Li grabbing a trapeze bar when it swung close to her, jumping off at the height of the swing, spinning through the air. Tai Li hooked her legs around a second bar swinging towards her. Grabbing the bar, Tai Li began spinning around as it swung through the air, ending with a one-handed handstand on it, much to the crowd's amazement as they cheered the performance. Though it didn't end there, as Tai Li swung around the bar, letting go at the highest point. Flipping through the air, Tai Li stuck her feet through two still rings, performing a perfect splits before she began spinning around. With her feet not slipping out, until she pulled one out and lifted her leg up, staying balanced in only one ring. Smiling at the crowd, Tai Li leaned forward to fall out of the still ring, grabbing both of them at the last second, flipping once before letting go and flying through the air. Grabbing the center support pillar of the tent, Tai Li wrapped her legs around it, keeping her momentum going as she spun around it, before falling back with her legs still wrapped around the pillar, grabbing it with her hand and unwrapping her legs. Tai Li held her body out from her the pillar, being completely vertical to it. The brunette then began scaling up the pillar with her hands, much to everyone's shock and awe. Once she was at the top, Tai Li moved her body to begin spinning around the pillar, releasing it once she was going fast enough, flipping through the air, and going through a ring made of fabric. Grabbing the fabric as it began unraveling towards the ground, with Tai Li remaining wrapped in it. Though just before she could touch the ground, Tai Li tugged on the cloth causing it to go in reverse, taking her back into the air. With the Kai blocker jumping out of the cloth, flipping through the air before landing back on the tightrope perfectly balanced. Giving another smile, Tai Li bowed to the crowd while still maintaining her balance, causing them to erupt into cheers at the spectacular and magical performance. Many believing she gave an even better show since it would be her final one. But Naruto and Azula saw the look the brunette gave them as she gave her bow. The show was for Azula. Later after the show had ended, Naruto and Azula had gone to Tai Li's tent, finding her inside and changed back into her regular attire. What was that back there? Azula, said narrowing her eyes the brunette, with Tai Li smiling at her. I think it was my best performance yet, a perfect one for my final show. Replied Tai Li, happy at how her performance turned out, especially with the changes she made to it. Not that. The look. You looked at me and Naruto once it was finished. What was that? Said Azula, wanting to know what it meant, as the brunette merely kept smiling and grabbed her hands. Simple. I wanted to put on the best show I could for you Azula. 
You're my best friend and I wanted to do something that could help you, even if it was just to take your mind off of everything that's happened. So, I did what I do best and gave you the greatest show I could do. What? What did you think of it? Tai Lee asked, looking at Azula, wanting to know what she thought of the show. With the Fire Princess being shocked at this, that Tai Lee gave such a performance, for her. Just to help her take her mind off of everything that's happened, to do something for her. It, it was amazing, you've, why yo you've certainly improved a lot since the last time I saw you, and and no not that it was that impressive. I mean if you can do it, then I'm sure anyone with actual talent and skill would be able to do it easily. Azula replied before hastily adding the latter part, though Tai Lee smiled brightly and hugged Azula. Ooh, I'm so happy you liked it. I wanted it to be my greatest performance, I'm really glad with how it turned out and that you liked it, said Tai Lee before pulling back to look at the Ravenette. And I was serious before, from here on out, I'm going to be there for you, no matter what. Tai Lee added with a sincere smile, shocking Azula again that she was serious would always be there for her, before she smiled slightly. Thank you, Tai Lee. That, really means a lot, said Azula, with Naruto and Tai Lee now being shocked that she actually thanked her. You, you thank me. You really thank me. Tai Lee squealed as she hugged Azula tightly, causing the Ravenette's eyes to widen at realizing what she just said. This is so amazing. Ooh, I can feel my aura is so much brighter and pinker than ever. And I can see yours as brighter too, Azula. Said Tai Lee, happy at being able to help her friend. And you wanted to just leave. Do I get a thank you for convincing you to watch the show? Naruto asked, with Azula quickly pushing Tai Lee away. Nnn no 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 no. Absolutely not. I did not thank you for anything, let alone for that stupid performance. And I didn't mean any of that nonsense. I just don't want to deal with you crying at how terrible it really was. And I still believe it was nothing, but a waste of time. Azula said, shaking her head, refusing to let them think she was weak. Ah, it's all right Azula. Next time it can be a private show for just us. That way you don't have to worry about letting anyone see you excited said Tai Lee, smiling at her friend, who rapidly shook her head. No. I would never waste my time on such things ever again. I only stayed because he insisted, otherwise I would have returned to the ship alone, retorted Azula, glaring at them both. Don't worry Azula, I'll make sure the second date is even better than this, Naruto said with a smirking, as the fire princess glared at him murderously before storming out of the tent. The sight making Naruto and Tai Lee laugh glad that they were able to help her relax and enjoy herself a little. Later once Tai Lee had packed her belongings, the trio had returned to the royal sloop, where they were greeted by some of Naruto's soldiers. General, we managed to locate Jun, she's on the ship now, said a soldier, making Naruto nod in thanks before he, Azula and Tai Lee walked up the gangplank, where they found Jun on deck. Jun had fair skin, long dark black hair that fell past her shoulders and covered the right side of her face, along with some being held in a topknot with a skull motif band, and grey-green eyes, along with two red tattoos on her shoulders depicting snakes curling around themselves. With her attire consisting of black boots that went up to her knees and three small belts with gold buckles, two around her ankles and a third at the top of the boots, form fitting black pants, a black kipau dress with a red interior and split down the sides with the back being longer than the front, two black belts with gold buckles wrapped around her midsection, and fingerless black gloves that went up past her elbows. With her also having dark maroon lipstick and blue eyeshadow around her eyes, and with her was her shirshu Nyla. June. Naruto said, making the bounty hunter look at him with a smirk. About time you showed up handsome, I was starting to get bored. You got another job for me or finally ready to take me up on my offer? June asked as her smirk turned suggestive making Azula narrow her eyes at the bounty hunter. You were brought here for a job, nothing more, said Azula, with June turning to look at her, never once losing her smirk. Huh, you know it's funny, you remind me of this angry little boy I ran into, you've both got that same nasty little scowl going for you, said June, seeing a resemblance between her and Zuko. What? Wait, you don't mean Zuzu, do you? Azula asked, realizing she meant Zuko causing June to laugh at the nickname. Zuzu? Ah ha 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 ha. Oh that's rich, I'll have to remember that if I ever run into Angry Boy and Uncle Lazy again. Unless it's those two you want me to help track. June said after calming down, with Naruto shaking his head. No, 
We already have one of them captured and Zuko can wait. We want your help to track and capture the avatar, as well paying for your extended services," replied Naruto, making the woman's smirk widen. The avatar. Short kid, carries a stick, covered in tattoos, kind of annoying. I've already dealt with him when Zuzu wanted me to track his girlfriend, little brat messed up Nyla's nose," said June, petting Nyla, who growled and shook his head at the reminder of all the perfume scents. You want me to help catch him, it's not going to be cheap," June stated, looking at them, knowing the avatar isn't a cheap target to hunt down. We'll pay three times your usual price for tracking and locating him," Naruto offered. You'll also be paid every other week you're here and assist us in anything, outside of our mission," added Azula, knowing money wouldn't be an issue, with June thinking it over. Make it I'm paid every week and I get to decide the price depending on the task I help you with. And striking the price for tracking the avatar, I get a new whip, my own ship, and I get a room next to my pet foxy there," said June with a wink at Naruto, who gulped at the last request, while Azula scowled. Th that's de do doable, but, why the room? Naruto asked, with June walking up to him, dragging a finger along his chest. Well I'd ask to sleep in your room with you, but you know how I prefer the chase and I always get my prize. Besides, it'd be so much more fun if you came to me, Foxy, June said slyly and lick her lips slightly, making the high general blush at her actions, much to Azula's annoyance and slight jealousy. You can have your whip and whatever ship you want, but you will not have a room anywhere near him, said Azula pulling Naruto back, making the bounty smirk at her. And who are you, angry girl? His girlfriend? Questioned June, causing the fire princess to blush in embarrassment before quickly shaking her head. And no no no. No. I would never be this fool's girlfriend, but I am his fiancé, though only because it was arranged, Azula said, making June's smirk widen before she grabbed Naruto's arm and pulled towards her. If that's the case, I'm sure you wouldn't mind if we had a little affair. I made sure Foxy knew I'm ready whenever he is," June said, giving Naruto a sly look before Azula pulled him back. I would in fact mind. Even if I have no choice in the engagement, we are to be married. And I refuse to have my image sullied because my fiancé was tempted by anyone, let alone a lowly bounty hunter. Azula retorted while glaring at June, who merely looked at her in amusement. M maybe we should cc continue the discussions in the morning suggested Naruto, feeling they'd have clearer heads then. Fine with me Foxy, and when you're ready to have some fun, make sure your girlfriend doesn't know. I don't like being interrupted, June said, giving him one last wink before she and Nyla went into the ship, with Azula growling at her. Tai Li. You can have the room next to ours, said Azula to her friend before dragging the blonde firebender back to their quarters, refusing to let June in a room anywhere near hers and Naruto's. Though mentally, Azula was wondering why seeing June act that way with Naruto annoyed her so much, before simply shaking her head, pushing it through the back of her mind and instead continued heading back to their quarters, making a mental not to make sure Naruto and June were never alone together. That's it for the first half of what if Naruto went to the Avatar realm and married Azula thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Bye bye.